record. And I think we're live. All right, so here we are again for Saturday Night Live on Zoom for the Master Fast System. And we have special guest, Linda, who is also, uh, we asked her to become part of our admin team because she has a vast knowledge with her too long uh, master fast experience and uh, a history of being a nurse. So there's lots of uh, knowledge there sitting in front of us right now and uh, we have the pleasure for her to share her story and uh, her journey and uh, what's happening now and uh, you know we'll discuss some stuff and, and then later if anybody has any questions uh, I'm sure she'll be happy to uh, answer. So Linda. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you feeling today? I feel fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It's just going really good. I'm still just doing mono fruits. Um, I do grape juice on the weekends, do my kind of like my little mini ma master fast on the weekends. It just works out really well. Easy to take with me when I take the kids somewhere, the grandkids somewhere. Yeah, it's, so, it's a simple lifestyle. Very um, simple. Let, let's let's back up a bit to uh, how many years were you a nurse? Um, I've been in the medical profession since I was 23. Oh. Um, I was a nurse for um, 17 years, an um, R RN, but I've been in the medical profession, worked with cardiologists, worked in surgery as a scrub tech, open heart, wow. um, general surgeries. Seems yeah, a lot. So long time in the medical field. Well, and uh, you, uh, what area were you working in the medical field in the in the U.S.? You're in the U.S., right? Right in the U.S., I was a critical care nurse, cardiac care nurse. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty interesting background. Yeah. Pretty uh, stressful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially when we had to, especially when we have to crack a chest in the in the unit before we take them back to surgery because they're bleeding out. Yeah, it's pretty exciting sometimes. My goodness, my goodness. Uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, I don't know. Do you ever get used to seeing all that stuff happening? Or uh... yeah, well, you do because, I mean, you just it's there's a learning curve. Granted, you know, six to nine months, but after the learning curve, it's just like going in and brushing your teeth you know yeah. you know what to do you know what to get you yeah. know what to pump and yeah awesome. so. okay so basically you're 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 working away and uh was uh your situation that happened uh with your kidneys um was that during work or after you retired yes no nope it was i was working and i got really sick um the ER doc said that I contracted the bird flu back in 2003 mm -hmm. and I was really dehydrated. Um, and so I passed out at home. And so my husband took me to the urgent care and they directly admitted me to the hospital from there. And from there they did a chest X-ray and from that chest X-ray um, it, there was an abnormality they saw. And so they went ahead and did a CAT scan and that's when they found the mass on my right tumor or my right kidney. And they said it looked like kidney cancer. So. What year was that? That was in 2003 in January. Jan well, it was the end of January, 1st of February of 2003. Yeah. And then um, from there, <clears throat> I had a urology consult and I went to see him and he scheduled an ultrasound to, you know, basically do a follow up and, you know, make sure that that's what it was. And that confirmed that there was a mass on my right, my right kidney. And so he said, we need to schedule surgery. So that's what happened. We scheduled surgery and 11 days later, I had a, I had surgery. I had a right total nephrectomy. So scheduled. But when the doctor. Can you say that in English terms? So <laughs> it, what a nephrectomy is a removal of the kidney. Right. 
And so what happened was um, he went in and did surgery and my primary care doctor scrubbed with him because you always, normally when you have surgery, you have two surgeons in case something happens to one of the surgeons, there's a backup right there. They don't have to scrub in or anything because it takes, you know, 20 minutes to scrub in. So um, my, my actual um, primary care was in surgery with me and he, you know, assisted and they took the two, the kidney out, you know, cause they open you up and cut you in half basically and have to cut two ribs, um, one floating, the one floating rib, and then they cut the other one so that they can get to the kidney. Do they, did they do that from the front or the, from the back? On the side. Oh, on the side. Okay. Yeah. So I was laying on my, on my flank side, you know, I was laying like this, you know, so, um, and where the tumor was, was, so here's your kidney, here's your blood and your ureter, right? And my, my kidney, my tumor was right there. Mm -hmm. And he took the very top part of the, for, a, for a, a specimen to have it biopsied in the lab. Whenever you do surgery, before you remove a major organ, you always send a specimen to the lab for the pathologist to run what's called a frozen section, which means that they flash freeze it, cryotherapy it's called, they flash freeze it and then they slice it really thin and put it on a plate and look at it under a microscope. And if there's cancer tumor, you know, cells there, they'll call back into the OR and say positive and then they'll remove the organ or remove, you know, and then they'll keep doing that until they get an all clear. So when they do a surgery and you have a mass, they'll cut what's called a margin around the mass to make sure that there's no more tumor cells in the outline area so that they got it all. They're doing <laughs> this all through the surgery? They can do that all through the surgery, yes. When I would do surgeries, especially, you know, metastasized surgeries, whatever, you know, when we're doing any kind of, you know, malignant surgeries, they would do probably sometimes upwards of seven or eight frozen sections on a surgery. Okay. You don't want to take any more tissue than you need to. Right. right. But you want to make sure you get it all. I never That's knew that this is what they did, but anyway. Yep. So, of course, he took it from the wrong area and it came back clean, so they put it all back in and sewed me up. Wow. All and, that surgery and they put it back in. Yep. yep. And if you know anything about, so to say, cancer, when it hits the air, it actually proliferates growth. Mm. Oxygen actually, you know, basically makes it grow faster mm -hmm. so anyways i requested a cat scan while i was i was in the hospital five days mm -hmm. and i requested a cat scan each day and they refused he refused too too soon too much scar tissue and he knew i was a nurse but you know and i knew that scar tissue takes months to form you know so but anyways it is what it is yeah so oh, oh, okay so they, they they did the surgery sold you back up and then uh you're off work i guess for a bit yeah i was off work and what happened was um because i basically fired the surgeon and i didn't request a second opinion before by the time i t it took me three months it took when i called the urologist in another town close by where i live they didn't have an appointment for me because I didn't have a referral for three months. So I didn't have a referral. My appointment was in May. And by then it had already grown and it attached to a muscle in my back called the latissimus dorsi muscle. Mm -hmm. And it was the size of a small candle. I mean, it was, it was probably the size of a gra a large grapefruit. Wow. And yeah, and um, I knew the, your, the radiologist when I had the CAT scan. And so he, wa he let me watch the films. And then he told me, he said, he goes, I'm going to call Bowie, you know, the doctor right now. And so that was Monday and I had surgery Wednesday. 
the second surgery? Second surgery Wednesday. And he removed the mass. It was all still encapsulated by the grace of God, you know, so it hadn't spread anywhere because they did a CAT scan. So there was no other organ or tissue involved. My lymph nodes were all fine. So I was very, very fortunate. Very, very fortunate. Well, the, the, from the first surgery to the second surgery, how much time? Three months. Three months. Wow. All because I didn't have a referral. If I would have had a medical referral, I would have probably got in within a week or two. Yeah. So. That's uh, quite an uh, ordeal. It was pretty devastating because I had a lot of nerve damage from the second surgery. Wow. So, but that's all gone now, thanks to MasterFast. All gone? What do you mean? What, what nerve damage? Uh, give us well, a I had, um, so they do an epidural. Mm -hmm. do you, does, you know what an epidural is? Yeah, to put the needle in the uh, spinal cord. Uh, yep, so that you can push a button after surgery, because kidney kidney surgery, any kind of surgery where they have to do, you know, I mean, I'd already had surgery, but the healing process after three months had already started. So they always do an epidural. They usually do an epidural so that the patient has control over the amount of pain medication they can get at a particular time. So he put that in and it took him three tries to get it. So he messed up something fierce. And I knew the anesthesiologist, and he came into my room the next day and apologized. He goes, I don't know what residual effect you're going to have from this. He goes, I'm really sorry, but I had a really hard time. And I was, when, they, when you go into surgery, before you go into surgery, when you're in the pre-op room, they give you a shot in your IV with a little Versed, and that's like an amnesia medicine. So even though you're able to get up and, you know, manipulate yourself what the, you know, doctor or, you know, the nurse wants you to do, you don't remember anything. Yeah. So it's kind of like the truth serum stuff. So, and so I don't remember anything, but he, he said he really, he had a hard time. I was bent over the bedside table, you know, like they, they normally do, you know, and he said he had a hard time getting it in. So, and so what happened was when the recovery period started, after the epidural was pulled, I had this nerve damage from the incision line all the way up to mid thigh level on my right side. And um, it was like there was a million needles sticking anytime anything touched that area. Ooh. So it was, it was horrendous. Only on your right side? Only on the right side. Wow. So. Unreal. Yeah. It was, it was pretty devastating because that, that was really, really, really painful, really painful. Yeah, ner uh, nerves are, uh, nerve damage, neurological, it's the toughest thing to, to uh, overcome and, and, and heal, um, but um, we know everything's possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> so then after that... Um, you know, I healed from that. It took about a year and a half to heal from the second surgery. It would have probably, I, you know, after the, if they would have taken out the tumor the first time, um, I probably it probably would have I probably would have been able to return to work within nine months. Um, but it took a year and a half to be able to function. Wow. Yeah, because one, one surgery after the other, boy, that's the total. Yeah. So, and then. Um, yeah, so then after that, I didn't work very much after that at all. Um, I, we, we went to court. Um, the second surgeon said, if, if, you know, it was pure neglect. And he said, if, you, if just this does make it to court, I will go to court for you. Oh, really? Yeah, so we didn't, we didn't make it to court. But I just went back to life as usual. Mm -hmm. You know, the doctor... Um, said, you know, you've got two kidneys, you know, you've got one, people live on one kidney, you know, and do fine. So I just went back to business as usual. So did they remove the whole kidney the second time? They removed the kidney and adrenal. Mm -hmm. So you only have one? One kidney and one adrenal. Right. Yep. 
and I take really good care of that puppy. <laughs> so basically, they, they, they hooked everything up uh, base, uh, to for the lymphatic properly and everything? You didn't have any issues on the one side? No. No, I didn't have any swelling, luckily, or anything like that. Yeah, I was very, very fortunate. Yeah, excellent, because a lot of people so, go through that. Yeah, but I was, I was really overweight, Gino. You know, yeah, we see your picture. I'm going, holy. Oh, yes. Very <laughs> overweight. Very overweight. So, but yeah. So, and then life went on. I, you know, just kept doing what I was doing and um, eating what I normally ate. And my oldest son had two grandbabies. And so that was really fun. And I just, you know, I, I, had, I had three children still in school, in high school at that time and um my youngest graduated in 2007 so um anyways and so it was a busy busy time i was i was lucky i was able to be home because i had worked so much i was working five and six twelve sometimes a 16 hour shift because we were short so short staffed wow. and a lot of times i worked 40 it took me about 40 minutes to drive home so a lot of times when I worked from 7 in the morning until 11 at night, I just stayed at the hospital in the doctor's lounge and then got up, showered, put scrubs on, and went right back and did another shift. So, wow. yeah, my, my daughter that I'm living with now, when she was 14, she goes, Mom, can I please have a picture of you because I forget what you look like. <laughs> and it just broke my heart. It just broke my heart. But, I, you know, I was sole supporter. My husband was disabled, and wow. you know, I had four, ch you know, four children at home. So this this was the second surgery. What are you in two thousand four ish, two thousand five? Two thousand and three. Still two thousand three. Okay. Yeah, this was two thousand and three. You know when I was working. So yes, this is this was you know before you know before the surgery and just right after you know afterwards you know I was going to go back to work and that's what I would have done. So but I didn't work after you know I didn't basically work as an RN afterwards. You know um, we settled out of court. And I was able to not have to go back to work full time. Awesome. So it was pretty cool. So you just you were working part time still. Yeah, yeah, I worked part time. Up until uh, you, are you retired now? You're, you're, you're oh yes, I'm retired. And, yeah. Well, you don't look that. Uh, you don't look like a retired person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm asking. So about what year did you basically say, okay, I've had enough of working? Yeah, it was probably. Um, probably around 2005. 2005. Yeah, I had a, um, I had three children in four years and we had lost a daughter to SIDS when she was seven months old back in 82. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I don't know if you guys all want to know this. I don't know how far deep to go. Yeah, whatever you want to share. You know. So I went in the army when I was 30. <laughs> So I was going back to school to get my full credentials as an RN and the recruiters were there and we'll pay you, we'll pay you to go to school. And I go, you will? And I'm going, oh my gosh. So that's what I did. I joined the army and well, I wanted to join the Navy, but they met their quote of smart older women. So <laughs> I wasn't able to join the Navy. <laughs> so, so I went in the army and yeah. And then after that, I, had three kids, one in 85, one in 87, and one in 88. So it was pretty crazy there for a while. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, and anyway, so, yeah, it was, it was pretty, it was uh, pretty exciting with, you know, with the kids. Um, you know, they, they kept me busy, you know, they really kept me busy, so. Yeah. All kids pretty much do. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so, okay. but anyways, yeah. So what happened was after, after that, after I was just, you know, kind of a stay at home mom, which was really kind of unique because I had worked so much. I worked since my baby. Um, I started school when my youngest was seven months old and my husband lost his job not per se lost his job, he fell at work and became disabled. And so they put him on workman's comp. And so we didn't have much money. And so I just basically worked, 
that's what I did. I worked and took care of everything. So, yeah, so it was really nice to be off with the kids and, you know, be there for them, and especially when they were teenagers. So, yes. yeah. What uh, just, just came to my mind, uh, when uh, did you start becoming overweight? What year was that? Um, I probably started gaining a lot of weight, um, I want to say in about mm, 90, 92. Mm -hmm. So when you were basically working long hours and stuff? Yeah, and working long hours, you know, just burning the candle at both ends, not getting enough rest, not, you know, taking care of myself at all. Mm -hmm. You know, so like most people, yeah. <laughs> most of us went through this. Yeah. Okay, so you uh, you basically uh, went into uh, retirement, basically all this and that, and uh, years are going by. What what else is happening there? So, um, not a whole heck of a lot. Um, my daughter moved to Texas, so. Um, I'd come to Texas about three or four times a year to see the grandkids and well, we only had one at the time, you know, and so, and then, um, yeah, I took, I helped out with at home, you know, with what I needed to do, take care of my husband, him being, you know, disabled. There was a lot of things that I had to take care of, you know, for him. Not that he couldn't have done a little more than what he did, but you know, it was it was a pretty busy time. So is he still around or he is he is he's in Oregon. Yeah, we separated in August of 2014. And we're getting divorced. So mm -hmm. yeah, so but, but yeah, so anyways, um, yeah, so I um, what happened when um, I went to the doctors in February of 2014. Um, I found a nurse practitioner that I really, really liked as an RN. She was an RN at the hospital where we worked, and she went on to get her nurse practitioner license. So that was really kind of nice because then I, I felt confident to go to her and have her be my primary. And she... I, I showed her the big mass, you know, I had this huge mass, you know, nodule, I should say, on my right side where the, my tumor used to be and the kidney and the surgery was, and I didn't know what it was. I go, I don't know if this is scar tissue or if there's something else in there. And um, what happened was she ordered a CAT scan. Now, granted, after my second surgery in 2003, the urologist suggested I get a CAT scan every six months for five years to make sure that there's no recurrence of a you know mass. Mm -hmm. And so I subjected my body to CAT scan and mm -hmm. the dive every six months for five years. And that ended in no 2009. November of 2009 was my last CAT scan as of that date. And then in... Um, February of 14, I went and had another CAT scan done. And yeah, it was a nice large mass of scar tissue on the right side, but there was a tumor on my left kidney. Mm -hmm. At the base of the kidney, which was okay, it crept up towards the blood supply. And to me, on the scan, it looked too close to even contemplate going and do a partial kidney you know surgery because you know if you don't have your ureter you can't urinate so that just dialysis wasn't an option for me mm. oh boy yeah it's just uh it's not nice people that are on dialysis mm -mm. no i'd worked critical care enough that i knew that the outcome, the, you know, the actual outcome that happens when you're on dialysis for a length of time. Maybe you can explain a little bit of that to people. So dialysis, if, 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 if there are people that don't understand what dialysis is, it's kind of like an artificial kidney. They put a tube in your arm, which is called a shunt, 
and it's usually in the arm. Sometimes it's in the neck. Um, rarely it's in the leg, um, but if they don't have a vessel or a, a vein to put it in, then they, that's what they end up using. But what they do is they hook you up with a large hold needle and basically draw the blood out and put it through a machine which separates the blood from the, you know, the rest of the constituents of the blood and cleanses. It's kind of like chelation. It cleanses the blood of all the toxin and the urea and all the, you know, all the other, you know, um, components in, in the blood. And it basically is, this machine is your kidney. Mm -hmm. And then they put the blood back in cleansed. And you usually have to have dialysis three times a week. And it takes about five hours a day to do that. Whoa. Yeah. So, and that's not the way I wanted to live. And because the dialysis is so hard on your cardiovascular, your blood supply, um, it causes degeneration and nerve damage because you're not getting the circulation, which helps the nerves work. And so you end up starting chopping limbs off. And usually you start the most farthest away from the heart, which is your feet, then your legs. And yeah, it's, it's not a pretty, it's not a pretty way to live. So, and you, you can only drink if you were, you know, when, when you're not doing dialysis, you can only drink 500 cc's of liquid a day. That's it. No matter what it is. So most people that are on dialysis, they all they do is suck on ice chips. Uh, when when people are on dialysis, they're still they still urinating. Yeah, it's just not if, no, not if they. Well, there's no. Well, if they remove the kidneys. It, <laughs> yeah, but even if their kidneys if their kidneys are non-functioning, and they have kidney disease. Mm -hmm. then, you know, the kidneys aren't functioning, so they need dialysis. And no, they're rarely, rarely, rarely do they start filtrating, you know, and, and working after you're on dialysis. So wow. I wouldn't doubt, though, that Master Fast could turn that around. It's, uh, well, people's bodies can do miracles. Um, it's amazing that people choose to go those routes instead of just changing what they put in their mouth. It just boggles my mind. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, many, many people don't know their options. A lot of people don't know, you know, and I, being in the medical profession, I knew what the outcome would be. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't so sure, the doctor wasn't so sure whether he could save, you know, cutting into the ureter and blood supply. So, and then he wanted to do it laparoscopically, which meant that he was going to cut five little holes in instead of opening me up. And to me, that just wasn't, I, didn't, I wanted him to see what he was doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't want these little cameras and all that. I wanted him to, you know, I worked in surgery, you know, you open somebody up so you can see everything, you know, so. Yeah, no mistake. So, okay, after you heard that, and you're going that route wasn't an option, what were you thinking then? So, yeah, so we, we went ahead and scheduled surgery. That was uh, February 5th. Um, I do believe it was February 5th or 6th. I can't remember. But anyways. The third. We, huh? The third surgery. The third surgery, yes. We scheduled surgery March 14th, 2014. Because I had scheduled to come see my daughter here in Texas and grandkids for three weeks. And... Um, Anyways, so he said, oh, yes, go ahead. It's a slow, you know, it's a slow growing tumor and you've got time. So we scheduled it that far out. And my son, my oldest son, Nathan, he said, you know, mom, I want you to look up Max Gerson and watch Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. Mm -hmm. And so I go, OK, well, I will. You know, we were leaving like in two days. So I didn't have any time to do that before that. But. I did some research on the way here, thanks to the internet. And um, by the time I got here, I'd already called my daughter. I said, I need a juicer. I need a masticating juicer. Um, I need these greens. I need carrots. I need granny, you know, granny Smith apples. I need, you know, and so she went and got me everything I needed. So when I got here, I had everything I needed. 
We watched the fat, sick, and nearly dead the next day, and I went on a 35-day green juice fast. This, what year was this? 2014. Oh, okay. So February. It's a long time after. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And so um, going back uh, quite a ways, um, two years after my first surgery in 2005, I developed an autoimmune disease called annuloma granulare, and that is a skin disease, um, so they say. And I had it biopsied because I had a history of cancer and I wanted to make sure it wasn't skin cancer or some kind of cancer. And it came back, this annuloma granulare. There wasn't any way, anything that they could do to cure it. They could subside the symptoms by giving me steroid injections, which I refused. And um, so that kept growing. I had it on my arms, my hands, my legs, my feet. How did it look? Um, well, it starts out looking like ringworm, raised red circle. And then as it grows, it grows odd shaped. And it's red and itchy. And when you scratch it, it bleeds. Mm -hmm. And then that actually creates more growth. It makes it get bigger. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I didn't really put too much on it at all. You know, maybe a little bit of Nivea, you know, some toxic cream. But um, anyway, so that just kept coming. You know, I just kept getting more spots and more spots. But after doing, um, I was probably on the gr green juice fast for about three weeks and that all disappeared. It just all, subs I mean, there wasn't any more raised spots, raised round, you know, um, areas at all i still have scarring you can see where it was but i have faith that in time that my cleansing and detoxing will clear that up too that was your very first cleanse it was my very first cleanse i'd never done any fasting or cleansing never knew anything about that they never teach you in medical school or you know nursing school or anything because I was a medical assistant and worked in, you know, I, I was a, a phlebotomist. Um, I took x-rays. I kind of did it all mm -hmm. in an EKG tech. And that's where I, this was way, way back when my son was little. And that's where I got introduced into open heart surgery. And that was in 79. And from there, I became an echocardiographer, which is a tech of the you know, ultrasound of the heart. And I did that for quite a while. Anyway, so I've been in the medical profession for a long, long time. But anyway, so um, yeah, it was pretty amazing. Never cleansed, never detoxed or any fasting or anything like that. Did ever, you, ever. Did you lose any weight on that cleanse? Yeah. I did lose a little bit of weight. Um, not, not very much, though. Mm -hmm. You know, so I drank about anywhere from 60 to 80 ounces of green juice a day. So, no no, nothing, just green juice. Just green juice, no enemas, no supplements, no nothing. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so yeah, so that was kind of, that was kind of a, a nice side effect. And from, from then also, I got the Max Gerson book, read about that, studied it while I was here in Texas. And I told my husband I was going to go, I wanted to go to the clinic. Well, their clinic is in Mexico. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was not wanting to go to Mexico mm -hmm. in 2014. So I found an offshoot clinic in Sedona, Arizona, and that basically did the Gerson protocol. And so I called and asked when I could, you know, um, register and join. And it was in April, the first week of, first couple of weeks in mm -hmm. April was when they had an opening. So. <laughs> That's what I decided to do. What what the, what's the entails the the Gerson uh, protocol? So the Gerson protocol is basically lot. Max Gerson believes that a lot of our problems with our, um, you know, chemistry in our body is low potassium, low iodine, a lot of Lugol's iodine. I took lots of Lugol's iodine. Um, 
and lots of liquid potassium. Every, every juice I had had liquid potassium in it. Mm. Every carrot juice, which was the juicing schedule, was a grapefruit juice for breakfast and eight carrot and apple juices and five green juices a day. How much fluid total? Well, they were anywhere from 12 to 16 ounces per juice. Wow. That's a yeah. lot of fluid. It's a lot of juice. No water. Absolutely no water. We could have a tea, one tea, either chamomile or peppermint. Um, and then Hippocrates soup, lots of Hippocrates soup, which is potatoes, celery root, parsley, um, you know, a little cabbage. Uh, not a fast. Nope, it is not a fast at all. Not a fast at all. And five coffee enemas a day, which I did faithfully for nine months. Hmm. Wow. So basically, more is better. Yeah, it, he, I, you know, I really believe that his rationale was okay if he would have just left out the cooked foods, you know, and we started out with oatmeal in the morning, which is just so, um, you know, inflammatory. Grains. Yeah. Grains. Mm. Mm -mm. Also, so, lots of supplements, I remember, right? Yes. Um, there was a point in time where I was taking 168 supplements a day. <laughs> Exactly. And 40 of those, 40 of those were enzymes. Yeah. So what does that cost you a day? Oh my gosh, I don't even, I don't have a clue. Rough. Oh, probably, shoot, I probably spent, well, for a month, it was about almost $900 a month. That's with all the supplements, all the juices and everything. All the supplements, the juices, um, part of the juices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My daughter was home. She moved back home with us. Uh, she lost her job. And so I was very grateful that she was there because she became my juicer. Mm -hmm. And we calculated up. She probably made me 3,500 juices during that nine months. <laughs> what about the electricity? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I was very fortunate to I looked for a, a Norwalk juicer oh, yeah. which is a juice plus a press because yeah. the Gerson basically promotes that but I didn't have 1800 to 2400 dollars to spend on one but I found one up in Portland Oregon oh quite a while, a while a long time ago but after this whole thing you know it was probably in two, the beginning of 2015 i want to say in january february we drove up and got it for nine hundred dollars so i grabbed it yeah so, it's a, it's a oh, nice, nice juice oh. and nice press but uh you know, it's uh they're all extinct with yeah. comes little master fast and makes everything extinct. <laughs> True. <laughs> we got <laughs> juicy. Why do you got a juice? Go buy it. <laughs> Company's already doing it for us. Much cheaper. Blows it out of the water. So cheap. Master Fast is so cheap. I, yeah, I, I'm glad you, yeah. you, you people are noticing. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, so yeah. So when I got back home to Oregon, I called the urologist office and I postponed, I didn't cancel, but I postponed the surgery until April, the end of April. And I didn't say that I was going to a clinic or I was doing a fast or a juicing, you know, fast or anything like that. And so, um, and they were fine with that. Never heard from the surgeon at all. And um, anyway, so I was getting prepped to go to Sedona, Arizona. And I had a colonic for the first time in my life before I went because I felt if I was going to have to be doing coffee enemas, I wanted to make sure that my colon was a little cleaned out. Anyways, needless to say, you know, one colonic just doesn't even touch. <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> so anyways, so... Um, so my daughter and I went to the Gerson Clinic, which cost about $6,000 for two weeks. Cheap. 
Yeah, yep, and um, it, they provided all the juice and everything, all the education, which is what I was wanting, you know, and, and especially for my daughter because she was going, she was basically my caregiver, you know, she was helping me, and um, and so we we both learned quite a bit, that's for sure. And I had blood work when I got there, and no, I had blood work before I got there, and my thyroid was actually. A little more regulated so my nurse practitioner her name is Linda also she said you know I want you to lower your thyroid and I said okay well my blood pressure was low and she goes why are you taking your blood pressure medication I said yeah I'm taking my blood pressure medication She goes, why well, I think you better wean yourself off of that and we'll check your blood pressure again well I was leaving in three days because they wanted really recent labs at the Gerson Clinic. So when I got to the Gerson Clinic, they did a full, you know, exam and everything. And my blood pressure was normal, so I never went back on my blood pressure medication. My A1C, which is a glucose monitoring test, was normal. Um, so, and my blood sugar was low. So she said, well, are you on any blood, med blood sugar medication? I said, yeah, I'm taking 500 milligrams of metformin a day. <laughs> she goes, well, I think you better cut that in half. So within, by the time I left Gerson Clinic, the middle of April, well, it was like April, not April 18th, I was off all of my medications, every single one of them. So they're just doing what you did at home, right? At the clinic, same thing with the soups and this and that? And yes, yes. I, I hadn't started any of that at home. No, I, didn't, I hadn't started any of that. I was just eating salads. Um, I was juicing. And I wasn't making the soup. Um, I wasn't doing any coffee enemas. I wasn't taking any supplements. So I didn't get all that until I went to the Gerson Clinic. Mm -hmm. So, and this was in Sedona, 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 Arizona, huh? So pretty there, mm -hmm. so healing, so beautiful. But yeah, so anyway, so got got ready to go home. My daughter had never seen the Grand Canyon, so we went to the Grand Canyon, and it was Easter Sunday, April twentieth, my oldest son's birthday, and in 2014 and the surgeon called me on our we were driving home we were almost to california and the surgeon called and he said you know it's been quite a while you really need to have surgery and i go well i'm not home right now i'm still not back in town <laughs> which i was and i wasn't lying and um he said well he goes, we'll go ahead and do an open surgery because he'd really wanted to do a laparoscopic surgery because they'd just gotten this machine and they wanted more practice, basically, is what he confessed to me in this phone call. And But they were he was willing to do an open surgery and cut me open. And I said, well, I appreciate that, John, but, you know, I, I'm not sure what, what, where my direction is going to go, you know, right now. And I go, I've been doing some research. <laughs> so, and he goes, well, you know, he goes, you really need to have that kidney, you know, the, the, the kidney tumor taken out. He goes, you only have six to nine months to live. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said this was a slow growing tumor. <laughs> you know, what do you mean? I only got six to nine months to live. More payment coming up. Yep, exactly. <laughs> you needed a new car, evidently. So... And that's what I wanted to say. I, do you really need the $35,000 that bad, really? You know, so, but anyways, so I let it go. He called my, my doctor, Linda, twice after that. And she had seen the transformation happen, you know, over the few months. And she was just amazed because she was scared for me. She knew me personally. And so she was really worried for me. But I told her, I go, you know, there's something about this juicing. Mm -hmm. I think this is the key. You know, I think this is going to work. Mm -hmm. So she was very, very considerate and respectful of my requests. She knew I was an RN. She knew me personally. Mm -hmm. So I would have ultrasounds every three months, lab work, whatever I wanted lab drawn, 
He would order it for me. So I was very blessed because I got to monitor the tumor situation every three months to see if what I was doing was working. That's your doctor uh, from Gerson, right? No, nope. This is my primary back in Oregon. Her name's Linda. She's a nurse practitioner. Hmm. Yeah, so she was very accommodating. I was very blessed. Well, you know, my, my philosophy is stay away from it. Trust in yourself. Yes, exactly. I, I know that now, but you know, back then I didn't even know, you know, so yeah, no, I was just, I, I know, just <laughs> yeah. I, I don't agree with any of that checking make sure it works. That's, that's where um, people, you know, they, they are trained to not trust in themselves. That's, right. the, problem. that's the problem. Yep. That's why I brought yeah. it up. Exactly. I agree with you 100%, Gino, because we all know, we all know deep in our soul and our core what what we're what we're doing is working or not exactly. you know and whether it be the master fast or any other thing that you're doing in life we all have innate intuition and when we don't listen to that how we feel and what our soul says and go with it then you know that's when we get ourselves in trouble Exactly. You know, when you question, oh, should I break my fast, you know, or this, you know, you know, especially with the master fast, people are so worried about, you know, coming, you know, having, making a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody falls. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is how all this came to be. In this yeah. Case. Yeah. Look at the ride you've been on. Yeah. Good all these one. years. Yeah. Yes. So, right. and it's, there's no right or wrong way to do it. You know, you do what you feel that you can do, tolerate and do at that particular time. And you get up the next day and you put a 110% effort into it and bam, you know, that's what happens. So yeah, if you fall off the master fast, don't kick yourself, just get up the next day. And if it feels, you know, right with you, then start back up. You didn't, nothing, no, no bad news, no bad, you know, no, nothing bad's going to happen to you. You're, you're on the right road and on the right path. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the biggest thing that I really worry about people is when they do the long ones and they go way off the, what, something crazy, like go eat a big pizza or something. That oh. Be life, uh, life in that situation. Um, you know, so. Yes, but that, that means that they don't really understand the master fast exactly. and breaking the fast, which you've already explained. Yeah. Yeah. Coming off the fast and going slow is so important and staying to water-rich fruits. Yeah. So important. Mm -hmm. So important. Mm -hmm. So you read, you know, and being a researcher, an RN in the medical field, you, you learn how to research. You research all this stuff before you even come off so you're prepared, so you know all the drawbacks and all the, the you know, the problems you can have and, you know, how, how people that break the fast the right way or do, a, you know, breaking a water fast or any kind of juice fast or whatever. If you don't do it correctly, you either end yourself in the hospital with a bowel obstruction or you die. Mm -hmm. because yep. that you know you're the peristalsis the movement of you know the colon and the intestines are totally stopped after three days of fasting yeah, they're, they're in healing rejuvenation and dumping mode at, at, at the cellular level yep. if, uh, for them you know to come back to life they, they you gotta give them some time some people's digestion turns on within a few days or a week or two others may take a few weeks no big deal Right. And, you know, working in surgery and working as a nurse, you know, to listen to bowel tones, listen to stomach rumbling, making sure that you're passing gas and everything's moving. You know, that's that's your sign that everything's moving. If you can hear, you know, your bowel growling, your stomach growling and your intestines moving the gas out or, you know, just moving a little bit of stool or liquid or whatever out your poo then bam, you know that you've got, you know, you've got it, you've got it working again, but you don't want, you don't, like you said, and I think it's just so prolific. When you go on a long fast, whatever it is, you should take at least half that amount of time to break it with water rich fruits or leafy green vegetables, raw, preferably of course, because cooked, that just binds you up right there. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. I mean, you have it all laid out so beautifully. There is no, there should be no question, really. 
Um, well, <laughs> yeah. it's good. It's good to question. Uh, we can always uh, find ways to improve and expand. Um, right. Well, I know. I know that some people that you know. I mean, I've helped quite a few people <laughs> since I've been on this journey, and I know that some people that are basically, you know, been given this life or death, you know, situation. You know, you're, you're going to die because there's nothing I can do for you. It's everywhere. Cancer's everywhere. Well, that fear takes over and they actually become paralyzed. They want to help themselves. They want to find something that will work. But they're so fear-based, you know, um, emotional wrapped up in that and stress that they can't even think for themselves. In reading, it, it's like they've got, you know, their brain isn't even working. So, and it is, it is hard, you know, that fear is just so paralyzing, so paralyzing. We see it over and over. Oh, yes, we do. That we do. But anyway, so what happened after we got back home? Um, my daughter just went right at it. We bought another refrigerator because we needed a whole nother refrigerator for our 25 pound bags of carrots that we had to buy every two days. Um, and all the vegetables and the fruit and yeah, we didn't have much fruit at all. They gave us, we were allowed a little slice of watermelon, maybe a small bunch of grapes and a couple slices of oranges. And that was it. You know, we didn't have access to fruit mm -hmm. you know they gerson the gerson protocol granny smith apple for your carrot juice and maybe a little bit of fruit and that was about it mm -hmm. wow so it was not fruit based it was mostly uh you know uh hippocrates soup and lots of juices lots of juices mm -hmm. so and coffee enemas mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so anyway so what happened was we just, you know, I just kept going what I was doing, you know, what I learned. My, my daughter just kept juicing for me. Um, I want to say in the end of May, my oldest son, we live in Oregon, which is a legal marijuana state. Um, my oldest son found a, a friend of his that went to high school and he, she was making cannabis oil. And so she brought that over um, for me and taught me how to use it. And so I started that and, you know, I don't drink. I, I'm never, I mean, well, I, I tried, I tried marijuana when I was 21 and I got such a horrific headache. I never tried it again. So anyway, so we, we started on that and because I, I know what the, you know, um, the chemical makeup of marijuana is you can't overdose on it. It's never killed anybody. I'd researched it before I started it. And so I thought, well, I'm going to take a little more than what she said for me to take. <laughs> so, anyways, and my daughter can attest to this. So, but anyway, so there were weeks that I was in bed and I would have to call on the phone while she was, cause it took her about, 15 to 20 minutes to juice for me. Her regimen was so intense. I can't even imagine because I started juicing after I got, you know, well enough after I got, you know, um, acquainted, not acquainted, but basically, you know, um, oh, I can't think of the word. Anyways, I was able to tolerate the cannabis oil without being like I was high all day. Right. <laughs> so my tolerance is what I wanted to say. My tolerance was built up. But it would take her 15 to 20 minutes to do the juicing. And then another 15 minutes to 20 minutes to clean the juicer. And then she would start prepping for the next juice. <laughs> With the Nor Norwalk press that you bought. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's a slow process. Slow process. Insane. Anyway, so, but I would call her and I'd say, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I can't find my feet, you know, so she would come into the bedroom and, and anyways, yeah, she, it, it gave her some entertainment, I say, <laughs> but anyways, so I was, I was basically in bed for about four to five weeks. You know, I didn't do much except drink my juice and eat what she brought me and, and that's what I, what I did. Was it easy staying on the program, drinking all that fluid? 
it was, it wasn't easy to live my life at all. My life basically became non-existent. I didn't have any life outside of the house. Yeah, you, you, you're busy doing the whole protocol. Couldn't do anything, yeah. you know? And like I said, every three months I had, you know, an ultrasound done. And the tumor, the very first ultrasound, it went from 4.6 to 5.1 centimeters, which I expected because I'd read about when you're doing a fast or doing some kind of therapy, mm -hmm. it will grow. It can. It's very common. Yep. So I wasn't worried about it. And then the next ultrasound, it had shrunk some. And then it kind of got bigger and then it got smaller and then it got bigger. So it never really even in nine months, it never even shrunk one centimeter. Mm. So, so that was really just, just, yeah, it's just doing this basically. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, with all the supplements I was on, Gino, I would have thought for sure <laughs> it would have really, you know, and the juicing and the coffee enemas that were supposed to be so great for your, you know, your glutathione level and, you know, so after. We, we know the truth it, now. <laughs> we do know the truth, boy. Yes, Max Gerson only could hear it now. But anyway, so, um, so after, after nine months, I decided to come off some of the Gerson protocol. I reduced the amount of supplements I took, uh, mainly the pancreatic enzymes. I stopped taking so many pancreatic enzymes. Whoa. And I was on seropeptase. I was probably on, mm, I would say, a, a hundred. They were each 200 mm, uh, milligrams. So I was probably on a thousand. Uh, thousand milligrams of serapeptase a day alone wow so, and you know and serapeptase if if you guys don't know what that is it's made out of it's from silkworms and but i do believe the reason why my mass my scar tissue went away within seven months it was gone it was because of the enzymes i do believe that that played a part in eating that up you know basically taking care of that and the cleansing, you know, with the juicing, but um, which was a nice, a nice thing to have happen, considering I didn't see much with the way of the tumor shrinking. So, um, but anyways, after nine months, I talked to my daughter and I said, you know, I think I'm going to try something else. You know, I'm going to still juice. I'll do some juicing, but you know, I, this just isn't. I don't have the outcome that I thought I would have. So I introduced um, some other herbs that um, this guy, Jim Gordon on Facebook, I found who had cured himself of cancer, kidney cancer. Um, and so I went on those, there was like seven or eight of those. And I went on those, I went on vitamin C, liposomal vitamin C. I did the Budwig protocol, which was cottage cheese and flax oil. Oh boy, you went on that as well? Oh yeah, you betcha. Um, and I did hydrogen peroxide, 35% hydrogen peroxide orally. And um, anyways, needless to say, you know, I mean, we're, we're looking at 2015, beginning of 2015, tumor's still there. And that third surgery was still put off? Um, no, the third surgery happened in May. Oh, you did went go through it. Uh, yeah, in May of 2014. Yeah, three months after the 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 surgery that I had. Yeah. And then what happened? Did they remove some some? They removed. They removed the whole right kidney. No, you, you, no, 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 no. Not not. I'm sorry. No, I'm I'm getting you. Conf I'm getting confused. What did you ask? I'm the, sorry. Gina. The third surgery. You you had put it off. Yes, yes, the surgery for their left kidney. Yeah. Yes, I didn't go, I didn't have it done. Okay, that's what I was wondering, yeah. Okay. yeah I'm sorry, I did not have it done. You completely it canceled it. Yeah, it was scheduled the end of April, and I didn't, I canceled it. Yeah, yeah. Good so, move. Yes, I'm sorry. But yes, and then, so what happened was, we just tried other things, and nothing seemed to really work. You know, nothing seemed, after, you know, every three months, I'd have, 
you know, an ultrasound done and it would still be there and it hadn't spread anywhere, which, you know, I was very, very grateful for. Don't get me wrong. Of course. Um, it's good. <laughs> yes, it was very good. But I found an article from USC. I want to say the beginning of summer. I want to say it was like in June of 2015. And um, about water fasting. And they took, the medical students took 30 baby rats and they grew them to adulthood and they separated in groups of 10. And what happened was they water fasted one group of 10. They intermittent fasted, which meant that they only ate for six hours, had access to food for six hours out of a 24 hour period. And then, and that was another group of 10. And then the other group of 10, they just had access to whatever food they wanted to eat. And the scenario went was, they went ahead and had done a whole bunch of blood tests, all the, you know, a whole gamut of blood tests before the fast. And so after the fast was done, which was only three days, they basically did a whole nother set of blood tests after another three days of waiting period after the fast was done. So it was six days actually after they started the, the, this, this experiment. Well, of course, the, the rats that ate what they normally ate, it was their blood tests never, that didn't change at all. Um, and the intermittent fasted rats, their blood levels actually got better by 30 to 50%. The water fasted rats were like they were brand new baby rats. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to start water fasting. So that's what I got into water fasting. And I did a three day water fast. Then I did a five day water fast about two weeks later. And about a week and a half later, I did a seven day. And then I did a 14 day. And then I moved to Texas in October. You did this on your and own? I did it on my own and I still was juicing on the other times, you know, that I wasn't doing the water fasting and ate. Um, and so I'd break my fast with juices and juice just for a few days before I started taking any solid foods in. And then, um, but I moved to Texas and did a, a water fast, 21 day water fast. I was going for 43 because I'd met a guy who cured his, um, testicular cancer with a 43 day water fast. So, but um, I got pretty skinny and my daughter got really worried. So she <laughs> convinced me to stop. So, what was, so, your yeah, so huh? what was your diet like between these fasts? Um, so I basically did a, a carrot and apple juice, some green juice. Um, I would eat salads. Um, I would have baked potato. I would have um, some oatmeal in the morning for breakfast. Not every day, not like on the Gerson, but you know, probably three or four times a week I would have oatmeal for breakfast. Um, a steamed vegetables, lots of steamed vegetables, you know, but I would have a baked potato pretty much every day. So not very good. No meat, you know, I hadn't eaten meat since February of 2014, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I didn't have, the only milk product that I had was the Gerson when we did the cottage cheese, because you did cottage cheese and flaxseed oil. Mm -hmm. So, oh. no, not the Gerson, the, bud, uh, the Budwig protocol. I, <laughs> we're one of the few that say eating and healing do not belong in the same sentence. <laughs> Amen. Oh, is that ever the truth? Mm -hmm. So after that, after we moved, I moved to te Texas. Um, and it was kind of an adjustment period here because I went from, you know, doing my thing and then coming here and being responsible for taking care of a five-year-old and an eight-year-old <laughs> grandchildren, pretty much full time, taking them to school, making their lunches, you know, picking them up, doing their, you know, with their homework, getting ready for bed. My daughter and my son-in-law were both in engineering school at the time, really heavy schedule. And so it was pretty hard. It was pretty hard. Um, I came in October. Um, I was scheduled to go back home 
in December for Christmas to see my other children. I had four children still living back at home. Um, and the fourth one was an adopted son that we got when he was 15. He was homeless, so we kind of adopted him. Um, anyway, so what happened was, um, it was in the end of November, I found an article about this Robert Morse. And so I looked him up and he, you know, he was on YouTube and I watched several of his videos and anybody who has a mass or a tumor should be on a 40 day, 35 to 40 day grape diet. And I go, I'm going to do that. Well, I waited until after Christmas to start that. And I started at the end of December and I started just eating grapes, no juicing, just eating grapes, no water. Um, he didn't believe in coffee enemas. I stopped my enemas. Um, and I, did, I didn't do anything really else except his 14 week. I bought his 14 week protocol and I did that. Um, and it had the stomach and bowels, but I didn't do GI broom, you know, which is like our psyllium pudding and our plasma pudding. And so what happened was, <laughs> through that process, I had an ultrasound done in, in December while I was back home. And so I knew what the mass was, what size it was. All my labs were perfect. My protein level was great, which was so nice to see because, you know, I mean, it proved that you do not need to eat meat to have a good protein level, you know, and that was a good education for my nurse practitioner because she always thought you had to have you know, animal food to, you know, get your protein level from, you know, your proteins from. So anyways, um, what happened was when we, when I got back home to Texas, I just kept on the grape diet and my daughter was like, what are you doing? And I go, well, I'm eating grapes. And she goes, but you can't have fruit, fruit, sugar. Fruit causes cancer to grow. And I said, well, I actually found this Dr. Robert Morris in Florida, and he says that that's what we're supposed to be eating is fruit. You know, we're not supposed to be eating vegetables or cooked foods or potatoes or, you know, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I kind of turned her on to the videos, and I think she watched a couple, but she was so stressed with midterms and everything, she didn't really pay much attention. But she, she had changed her diet to vegan. You know, she hadn't eaten meat, you know, for quite a while. And um, so had my son and my oldest son. But anyway, so what happened was um, I basically was like, you know, this is, this, is th this is really good. I've got enough energy to t deal with the kids. Um, you know, I'm pooping like a racehorse because, you know, heck, you're eating just fruit and fruit is very cleansing and it was grapes on top of that. It was Concord grapes. So I was like, all right, this is cool. So what, what, ha what, what I ended up doing was I kept on that and then transitioned to back to just juicing and I would juice oranges and pineapple and, and grapefruit. And I kind of just did fruit juices and then somebody posted something about the master fast and really? i barked my interest and i'm going hmm this is interesting and this was like the the beginning of february end of january beginning of february where and was i was just posted? huh where was that posted um i it, I can't remember the date that it was posted, but when I found it, it was the end of January, the 1st of February of 2016. Yeah, where? Sorry, where? Your oh, on, on Facebook. Somebody mentioned it on one of the groups that I belong to. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, word of mouth spreads, Gino. <laughs> and so no, I no, had no, to look. No. <laughs> I know. So I had to look you up and look up this protocol, and, and then I joined. I think I joined earlier. You know, I can't remember when I joined. You'd have to look that up. But anyway, so in March, I said, okay, I'm going to do this in March. I'm going to start this in March. And so I started the master fast in March. And I did 90 days. And then in June, I left Texas to go on vacation because my daughter was off for six weeks. And so I went up to see my daughter in Montana. 
she was living in Montana at the time and went to Idaho, Washington, came down to Oregon. And I waited until just before I was going to leave to come back to Texas to have my ultrasound done. So I kind of wanted just to give my body some more time just being on fruits and juices and fruit juices, I should say. Anyway, so I went and had the ultrasound done and the tumor was 0 0.3 centimeters. It had gone from 4.8 down to 0 0.3 centimeters in eight months. A third of a centimeter. Yeah, just amazing. Amazing. Oh, uh, did you lose any weight? No. Oh, man. Oh, yes. I lost a lot of weight. Holy cow. Well, you saw the pictures. So the picture, the first picture was basically what I looked like when I found out I had a tumor on my left kidney. So, and I'd lost some weight on the Gerson. Yeah, you, you went down gradually. Um, gradually. When you started the Master Fast, uh, and, and you, what did you weigh then approximately? And then you, after that, and what do you weigh now? So I probably weighed about 150 pounds when I started, you know, and yeah, and I weigh 112. Right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little bit of a difference. Yeah, it went from an 1820 <laughs> down to a 4.6. <laughs> uh, yeah, it you, is wild. Did you go, did you lose uh, a lot of weight on the first 90 days? Because you did 108 after. This year, yes, I lost quite a bit. Of, I lost quite a bit of weight on the ninety days. I lost the majority of my weight on that ninety days. Okay, and then the second one, how much weight did you go down to? Not too much. I didn't lose that much. Ooh. You know, I, I kind of I don't know why, but it just you know I just didn't lose. I didn't worry about it. I just didn't worry about it. Did you do enemas every day? I did enemas every day. What kind of enemas? Uh, and I did, I did, I used my Kalima board probably three times a week, three to four times a week. Mm -hmm. I bought my, I bought my Kalima board off Craigslist. Mm -hmm. It was mailed from Minnesota. Awesome. <laughs> um, what did you put in your water for? Um... So normally what I use is either grape juice, lemon, or just lemon. And, um, like we all know that if you're having any, you know, severe acid, you know, expulsion, you want to use baking soda. So that was, you know, the second. 90% um, of the time when I do an enema, I do just a distilled water flush first. Mm -hmm. It's just something that I always did when I was doing the coffee enemas. I'd flush out first with just straight distilled water and then, you know, put whatever I'm going to put in. Use heal all tea, um, kidney tea, and I make my own heal all tea, you know, um, I'm so, I'm grateful that, you know, uh, Dr. Morris puts all of the herb concoctions and his recipes on the internet so we all can utilize that information, what he does use. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Amazing soul. He's uh, always given as well. <clears throat> he is. Yep. And I, I totally, that's, that's how I, that's how I help people. I'm, I'm. A caregiver at heart, always have been, always have been, um, and I'll help anybody that needs help because that's just what we're here for. We're all one, and we're all in this together. Yes, we're here to serve. Yep. But I do believe what you said. You have to, and Connie mentioned this too, you have to be healthy yourself first before you can help someone else. Because if you sacrifice your health by utilizing your time to help someone else instead of helping yourself, you're the one who's going to suffer. Yeah. So you don't want to, you know, you want to take care of yourself and get yourself healthy first. We see a lot of that in, so, in health, uh, healthcare practitioners, so on and so forth. There, there's so many of them are not well. Yeah. And um, it, I, I understand now being in this position, dealing with so many people, it's easy to fall off track and be too focused on he helping other people and forget about yourself. Yep. I did that all my life. Yeah. yeah. And look where it got me. So you got to step back and, and take the time out yeah. uh, and, um, and, and, and do the work yourself as well. Yep. So I feel very, very blessed. I am, I have a new lease on life. I'm single. Um, I, 
I love my life. Um, I'm very, very happy and very content and grateful. And I just couldn't ask for anything better. And what is such, you know, I mean, I show people my driver's license when I tell them that I've battled cancer and they just look at me and go, no, that's not you. And I go, yep, that was me. <laughs> you know, and they just can't believe it. And I said, yep, I'm regenerating myself. You know, my eyes are better, <laughs> you know. So uh, from your first 90 day uh, master fast and then your, your second one, you just finished not long ago, 108 days. Mm -hmm. uh, can you maybe explain what differences you felt through the, the two experiences? So, um, well, I think the, I think the 108, I, the 90 days was the definitely the most um, cleansing. I really believe I did the majority of my cleansing, you know, yeah. uh, initial cleansing, I should say, during any, that 90 days. Any emotional stuff? So, um, not, not, not a lot. Um, I basically had tried to work all that out when I was doing the Gerson. I got a hold of somebody wow. referred Louise Hayes to me yeah. when I was doing the Gerson because I would wake up before I finally told my um, ex-husband that I was done in our marriage of 35 years in August of 2014, I'd wake up in the morning and, and before I was even diagnosed with the cancer in 2014, I'd wake up in the morning and go, God, I hate my life. I hate my life. Mm -hmm. And so that's the vibe that I was actually, you know, putting into my cells and my, my being. And, but I was so unhappy, so unhappy. And I felt trapped. I was worried my children would think what a horrible mother I was because I was leaving their disabled father, you know, how could I, and you know, death do you part through sickness and health. And so it was, yeah, it was, it was a mind game, you know, then. So I dealt with that. I think before I started the Gerson or the, the master fast, I really do believe I'd gotten through all that because I'd made peace with that. I forgave him for being selfish and self-centered and realize that's just who he is and that was okay he gave me four wonderful children and i was very grateful for that and yeah so yeah you're, you're pretty cool and calm mm -hmm. yeah. stable now I'm very balanced. <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's you know you and you get better you get better because i'm not i haven't had any major enlightening experiences yet hopefully the next fast that i go on i'll be able to have some of that i think it's because my life's too busy i don't have enough alone time mm -hmm. i think that's my biggest you know hurdle right now so uh, no i remember on your second uh, you were worried about uh, cough Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. My 108 days. I started my 108 days on the full moon in November. And I did a five-day, almost five-day dry fast. And um, I did it with a couple of other people, four all together, that I had met, that I was helping and trying to get them, you know, cleansed out and made them realize, you know, make them realize that their body would heal it themselves, you know, if they just gave them you know gave their their control up their mind control up you know because they were so wrapped in this fear and scared you know from what the doctors had told them and and so we had started the master fast in november and it was probably i want to say it was in january i got sick I, my mom, when I was little, my mom was a chain smoker. She would light a cigarette with a cigarette. So wow. I was always around cigarette smoke. I never, well, I smoked when I was five. I wanted to try it so bad. We were at a drive-in movie, if anybody remembers those. Oh, yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and I, wa I kept nagging her. I want to try, I want one of those. I want one of those. It looked fun because it had this you know, shiny red thing at the end, you know, and I wanted to try it. She had smoke coming out of her mouth. And so she said, okay, here, try it. And so I did, and I puked. And that was the first and last cigarette I smoked. <laughs> Good experience. Yeah. It's like, I was a quick learner. I always been a quick learner. So anyways, but so I got this cold 
and I'd just come back from Oregon at Christmas time. You go, what's going on? <laughs> oh, I, and I didn't really feel sick, Gino. It was the weirdest feeling. Mm. I just had mucus coming out of everywhere. Amazing. Uh, oh, my <laughs> gosh. And, and I just, I thought, well, you know, it's just, I've just got a cold. You know, I've got a cold. So what happened was I came, I came on Zoom. I mean, this was probably three, four weeks. And I came on Zoom and I asked you, because we talked about it, remember? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, my gosh, I am just coughing up all this mucus and snotty nose and my ears are plugged. And, and you shared what you went through. And I'm going, oh, okay, then this is okay. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. When people look at you, if you're not coughing, you don't look sick. Because no. you're not. No. The best time to fast is when you get a cold or flu. Stop yep. eating. <laughs> the body in a purging mode. I know. When you said, oh, I love those, those days when I get sick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just blessing because it, you get so much more out when you, yep. when you trigger that. And, and um, um, the funny thing is, you know something you hear some people, they never get sick. The body does not have enough energy to get into that mode. Right. And this is what people fail to see, the blessing when you get a cold and a flu. That means you have at least some energy for the body to go into that deep, you know, uh, elimination yes. mode. Especially right. if you fast. It means oh. it's coming from deep, when you're fasting, oh, it's yeah. in January. Right. So you exactly. got a real deep cleaning. But you know what really surprised me was that I didn't have any kind of those symptoms at all during my 90 days. Yeah. Isn't that weird how it took no. another fast? <laughs> well, we used to say, scratch the surface, but now yeah. we say, we just opened the doors. Yep, yep. Now, after 108 days, let's see what happens. That's yeah. just open the doors. I go agree with you. And go to the next one, and go to the next one, yeah. and watch what happens. I so that's agree. Nine years. <laughs> it does, it does uh, you know, kind of, it's a little bit scary when we go yeah. to this, especially on the fast, when you're already feeling you're losing weight and this and that, you know? And oh yes. People freak out as well, right? Around you. Cheers. Um and it's really yeah, it's it's um that's when you want to be really smart because you you know that you're detoxing and instead of going for food and breaking your fast, mm -hmm. help your body uh, release, you know, purge. Yeah. Or an enema, do a colonic, do whatever you can do just to help your body release instead of uh, being scared and worried because that's what we do normally, right? Yeah. I, mean, well, I, I, was, I was never scared. I mean, my daughter wanted me to go to the doctors because I'd had it for over, you know, three weeks. You know, you're, you, know, you need to go to the doctor to make sure you don't have pneumonia. And I'm going, no, pneumonia is good. You want to get pneumonia because that's what loosens everything up and you can cough it out. And, you know... She hasn't done the research and reading right. and stuff, so it doesn't make sense to her. But we all know that we all know the reality of it all. It's a, it's a blessing, folks. If you get a cold, flu, anything like that, it's a blessing. But yeah. I never, I never felt sick. Yeah. You if, know? If, if folks are sitting on the fence, if they should start, when they should start, if they get a cold and flu, there's no question anymore. Stop mm. eating. Jump in. Yep. <laughs> and dry fast as much as you can. Yeah. You know, I was dry fasting anywhere from 18 to 20 hours every day on my 108 days. Wow, you're pushing. So, pushing. always, that's just who I am, you know, yeah. go for the gusto. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm careful about people coming off from, you know, sad diets and everything, pushing yeah. that hard in the dries. But you've already done some cleansing and so on and so yeah, forth. Right. Um, I think, I agree with you, Gino. I think if I had not been on the Gerson as long as I had been yeah. and done all that juicing, I don't think I could have gone like I did when I started yeah. at all. I don't think my body could have handled it. Yeah, people get in trouble. I've, I watched. Uh, they they, they want to just push and push and push and then right. they can't finish. They can't go to the 108 yeah, yeah. days. So yeah. we're, we, that's why we have a, a range 12 to 20 hours a day for your mm -hmm. window. But that's from, you know, a beginner to uh, adapt person who's been fasting and eating clean for a few years. Um, mm -hmm. And still, it, it, it really, um, <clears throat> it really kicks your butt if you're doing yeah. it. Um, I was, I, I did the 35 days not too long. I was doing three days a week dry. 
it kicks your butt. Yeah. Yeah. Three days a week. Three days a week. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> that's pushing it, buddy. It kicks your butt. Yeah. yeah. Even for somebody that's been fasting for a long time, it's, yeah. it and, kicks. And you your don't butt. feel it right away. You feel it after a few weeks. You're like, oh my god. I'm right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it takes your, your it takes a while for you to you know reboot yourself after that you know going yeah. pushing yourself. Yeah, this is why you know we, we say follow the system the way we plan it out on the low end side. Do your hundred and eight whatever. Go back yeah. to eating. Go back to eating. Once you've eaten for about a month or something, then start thinking about really pushing your drive. Yeah, I'm while starting eating, in April. Yeah, while you're I'm eating, starting. push that drive, and then start preparing for your next master fast. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I do, I do kind of like a mini master fast, you know, juice only, um, psyllium pudding, kidney tea mm -hmm. on the weekends, and then I'm mono fruiting it, you know, dry fasting, basically 18 hours a day. Cool. Are you, so you know. right now you're eating basically what, fruit and salads or? No, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Just fruit? Just fruit. Oh my it's gosh. Let me tell fruit. you my. Let me share you with you my vegetable, my salad, my salad experience. So I drove down from, I drove to Texas, from Texas to Montana and then Oregon. And I went down to California at the end of my six weeks last year, summer, to, to see my girlfriend and that I'd known for 20 years. And we went out to Chipotle to celebrate. <laughs> and I had salad with uh, the vegetables that are cooked in oil this a little after your master fast the first one this was after my 90 day oh, okay yep okay yep and this was last summer <laughs> so i had a salad with you know the vegetables about a tablespoon of brown rice a tablespoon of black beans mm -hmm. and some guacamole and some salsa and after that, we got home. We ate that there. And after we got home, two hours later, I was puking and pooping on the toilet. And it couldn't get out of my body fast enough. <laughs> and I don't know if it was the oil with the vegetables or the beans and the rice, but I didn't care. I had been monofruiting it since the end of June. Wow. You know, and this was in August. You know, why? Why did, I, why did I have that reaction? That just was like, okay, my body's saying it only wants fruit. Okay, I'm with that. The body's way, wide awake and in, in tune. So you, you're okay? You have no issue staying on fruit? Nope. A lot of people, my, Gino, it's all in your mind. Oh, of course. A it's lot of people have challenges with it, and that's okay. It's okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, I you have, know? yeah, I just, I eat... You know, I had, um, yesterday I had eight oranges. Mm -hmm. That was your whole day for the whole day? For the whole, the day. whole day. Eight oranges. I had some tea when, when I broke my fast. Um, I had a grape juice with lemon. I still drink that every day. I'm, I'm a creature of habit. <laughs> and I had my oranges. How, had can you get, how can you get sick of this? <laughs> I know. I don't. <laughs> No. Every mouthful, I love it. No, and if you'd want to change the flavor, then add dark cherry juice, add, you know, sour cherry, add pomegranate, add yeah. prune, add whatever kind of juice you want to it. We got so many options. Oh my gosh. Grape juice with a little orange juice and a splash of mint. Mmm, yum. Bubbly to celebrate the dry fast. Yes. We got, you know, dessert, which is a plasma pudding. We got, yep. we got everything. Yep. <laughs> what more do you ask for? I know. It's just not, I mean, it's totally doable. It's totally, you can, you know, and when I was going to break my 108, you remember, because I contacted you, I said, I, I really feel like I don't want to break this. Yeah. You know, and you said, well, look at Marin. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, my gosh. The king of Master Fast. Oh, yeah. so. He's blown it out of the water. Like, <laughs> wow. Wow. But anyways, yeah. so, yeah, yeah, so I had an older ultrasound in December of this last year, December 2016. Same size, just barely there. And the radiologist said, he goes, I think it's, he goes, Linda, he goes, I think it's really just probably scar tissue, and it'll probably dissolve within time. Yeah, that's uh, 0.3 yeah. centimeters, three, three millimeters. Yeah. Nothing. 
It's, uh, <laughs> wow, Linda, it's, uh, you are an inspiration. Oh, thank you. And thank how you. you broke the fast and how you're mono food eating now. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah I, I feel very fortunate to find this. I mean, my hair is turning back to brown. My eyes are <laughs> fixing themselves. <laughs> I mean, you know, and I'm, I'm in my 60s, you know, so means nothing you're glowing you're glowing yeah yeah exactly i want to make it to 120 that's what i'm working for yeah it's uh so it's amazing amazing yeah. journey. i just uh i just love watching people go through these metamorphoses you know it's just oh man the testimony page is just awesome yeah yeah and 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 you know we, we still get people looking for a piece of paper to you know verify I just, I just, it's not for them. That's all. It's not for them. At, yeah. At this time. Yeah. When, when, the time, I mean, when, if, you know, if illness or cancer or whatever kind of, you know, mainstream, you know, pharmaceutical, medical mafia, they want to label whatever kind of illness you've got going on. If it hasn't touched them at their heart and soul, you know, if you've introduced it. The medical the medical system's got its purpose uh, for whatever it is, but absolutely, absolutely. But we all know now. What I know now, I you know had a hard time after what you've knowing, seen knowing what I did to my patients in the hospital. I really have a hard time, you know. At at back then, I don't anymore. I forgave myself for poisoning my patients because I didn't know any better. Exactly. Uh, so many of us, we've been brought up in, in this uh, narrow view window of what we've been indoctrinated with, and we don't know anything about anything else. We we've been poisoned through the air, through the food, through the water, through television, through radio, through school. <laughs> it's it's a system. What's the word they do? Um, we're born to six. Uh, how does it go again? We're born to succeed. We're set up for failure, something like that. Right. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you learn what you live. Yeah. You know, you learn what you taught. So. Yeah. so but anyways. <laughs> so yeah. that's that's my that's my my journey to today. You know, so amazing. far. Amazing. <laughs> no, it's just amazing. Just. Uh, you're you're very very stable. You're very focused. Um, I see very few people, and they're just all over. They just don't know if they're coming or going. Even after they do a fast, they're still confused. And it may take two, three, four of these fasts before you start finding balance. And that's okay, folks. Yeah. Look at Linda, how stable and calm. This is what you can achieve when you uh, you you make right. it this a commitment for life. Ten to nine years means lifetime. I think I think my journey has a lot to do with how come I feel so secure with what I'm doing. No matter what protocol I was on, Gino, I put 110% into that. You believed in it. I believed in everything that I was doing was going to heal my body. And when it failed, I mean, yeah, I got frustrated, but it didn't paralyze me. I just went on to the next thing. You know, I just, I yeah. never stopped researching ever. Well, you, you had some, some successes, um, you know, but they're limited, you know, going through those ways. They're limited. Right. They can do, but you've had successes. They didn't grow bigger or anything. No. Nope. You saw nope. some other issues and that was your, your roadway to find where you're, what you're doing now. So yes, it a, is a definitely blessing. like all those experiences I had. No, oh my gosh. People don't even believe the things I've been through because no, no and way I, you get all that. <laughs> when you read when when I read your testimony in the file section, the pages of testimony that you've got. I mean, because yeah, so, so yeah, I mean you're very you were very thorough in in documenting what you went through. You know, you you're a miracle. You really are a miracle that you're here. You know, especially yeah. with your friend with your friend passing yeah, he, he, yeah that was sad but um there was I, I came close at that time it was it was horrific mm -hmm. um but uh, it was another time that I, I i came pretty close to death uh, there was a lot of things that happened i'd be going to sleep but didn't know if i was going to wake up it was so mm -hmm. horrific all the numbness in the side of my face and arm uh, you know, I think I even had a heart attack. I never went to the doctor because I said, I'm not going that route. Yeah. But anyway, you know, it was all a learning lesson. Everything I did in my life, 
And the information that came through me, um, you know, was for all for a purpose. Was That's all. right. That's right. We're all on this journey for, you know, growth, basically. You know, we're all on this journey for growth. And all this information we are sharing is nothing new. It's only a new understanding. Yes. That's all it is. It's, I didn't invent anything. Yeah, just put it together. I just put it together to make it mm -hmm. doable for anybody who wants to commit. And also efficiently, safely. It's very powerful. It's a, lot of, a lot of thought and experience went into putting this together. Yeah. So, you know, it was, it's, not, it's not mine. It's right. We had to give it a name. Masterfast. It's not right. me. No. And that's, yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. It really, and it's so damn simple. Excuse my French, but it is so simple. And it's too simple that you won't believe it. Like and, other and people don't believe it, you know? Nope. Never, I would never have believed it. I was so, you know, I was so gersonized. Mm -hmm. Fruit's yeah. bad for you. Fruit yeah. feeds sugar. You know, fruit has sugar, feeds the cancer. Yeah. You can have a full life on. Most people will have a full life. They can go to work. We have a professional athlete who did 108 days. Oh my gosh, she was fantastic. Come on, you know? love that. Yes, yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna have people with challenges. We're gonna have that. But folks, if you commit and you trust, you have the faith. You're gonna go through it. Yeah, you're gonna go through it. And if it's your time to go. It's your time to go, and that's okay too. Yep, and that's okay. I was never afraid to die at all. I would rather have died than be on dialysis. I didn't want to live like that. Yeah. Um, I've seen death many, many times, yeah. and it's really, really peaceful. It's not yeah. horrific unless you have, you don't have your pain medication or your pain taken care of. If you're in, you know, serious pain. Um, I find drive fasting is the best for pain. Yes, absolutely. That is, to me, dry fasting is the master fast. Of course. It's a glorified it dry fast. Yep. It's masked with grape juice. Yep. <laughs> and the other stuff we do. Yep. It's a glorified dry fast. Right. It's all based on a dry fast. I, I tell anybody that's having problems, dry fast. Now, my grandson, when I, when I got on the grape juice, it was in, I want to say, April. I started the master fast in March, so it was April. My grandson has asthma, had asthma, I should say. And, um, you know, once a month for a week, he was out of school, sick at home, which, you know, gave me something to do all day. Breathing treatments every four hours around the clock. Well, in April, he had, he got sick. He got a runny nose Monday, came home from school, runny nose. And that was always the precursor to, you know, him going full blown asthma. Mm -hmm. So I said, Oh, Marcus, he was going half day. He was in pre preschool. I said, Oh, Marcus, I go, we're going to, we're going to water fast you and <laughs> use fast you. So I basically put him on an apple juice, grape juice. I made him a little bit of tea and water. He, and three days, bam. No asthma sense, Gino. No asthma sense. I mean, he didn't. He did not do dry fasting any length of time consistently. But how long ago was that? That was in um, April of last year. So it's been a year. Wow. We had uh, quite a few people. Their mothers have put the children on the, even the hybrid with great results. Mm -hmm. Love, yeah. love to do that. Children love. Uh, they they heal quick. They do. But anyways, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Yeah, that's what we were thinking. If anybody has any questions, uh, speak or forever hold your peace. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time to ask Linda. She's on. We have uh, about 20 minutes. Okay. Come on, guys. <coughs> Now's the time. Anybody? Oh, here. Go ahead, uh, Marilyn. Hi there. Um, can you tell me what you put in your enemas? So right now, what I put in my enemas are usually um, lemon juice, 
and I will do some grape juice and lemon sometimes. And I'll put in heal, I'll make some heal all tea or some kidney tea and I'll, I'll use that also. But I always do a distilled water flush. I'll do a half a, half a bucket full of distilled water first, you know, and then I do the regular enema. My colonics, you know, what I do with my Kalima board, my five gallons, I usually use tea. Okay, so, so um, um, coffee is out, right? Is that no more coffee? Mm -mm. No coffee enemas. No. no. We 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 uh, we don't recommend ever doing coffee enemas. Yeah. We I we did. have a list of the things we recommend on the website and in the file section. Well, Sorry, I looked for it and I, I can't find it, but uh, I wrote you an email, so maybe I could be directed to it. <laughs> okay. But thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're for welcome, your Marilyn. Thank you for your question. Anybody else? Yeah. Eleanor, go ahead. <laughs> you have to you. unmute. Uh, here, well, I'll unmute you. Hang on. Go, go ahead, Eleanor. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Ah, great. Um, I was wondering if you're still using the tinctures. I'm not right now because I'm not on the master fast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll wait. Right, right after the master fast, you stopped taking the tinctures. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. recommended. It's recommended to only do use the tinctures when you're on the fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If if you yeah, want was, to use. Was, yeah. Go ahead, okay. sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. What were you going to say, Gino? Yeah, if, if, if you want to use herbs while you're eating, as I recommend, um, you do it only sporadically. Or if you need some assistance for a few days a week, don't, don't use herbs when you eat. Your body gets used to them and use them as foods. Waste of money. Mm -hmm. Waste of money. When you fast, go all out. You're going to get, that's where you're going to get the magic happening. Yeah. How are you doing, Eleanor? You're uh, close to finishing. Yeah. Really, <laughs> I, can't, I almost can't believe it. <laughs> what, what day are you on? I'm sorry? Which day are you on approximately? What day? Uh, I have still have to go, uh, let's see, Wednesday, um, now Wednesday, one week. So, uh, Sondag, Maandag, this yeah. Wednesday, 11 days. Yeah. Woo <laughs> 11 days awesome exciting. so exciting yeah. you look great yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's going uh good but the my, the lump in my left breast is still there it 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 showed up during the fast mm -hmm. but also i'm i'm not afraid and uh, I, I'm just, it disappears. <laughs> it will. It will. <laughs> yeah, that's why, I, that's why I'm here. I, I needed some uh, uh, encouraging uh, words. <laughs> just, just, yeah, think, but, just, think, uh, just think if you didn't do the fast, where would it be? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that that's true. And also, um, last week I had a cold. I Yay! had a, like a like a kind of flu. <laughs> awesome. Amazing, awesome. Good. Best thing that can happen. Yep, that's really healing. Well, good. It's good to see you, Eleanor. Yeah, nice to see you too. <laughs> Thank you for the interview. Huh? <laughs> You're welcome so much. Thank you. Great. Anybody else? Anyone else has a question? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got uh, Nath and uh, Char. I don't know what the whole name is on here, but I unmuted you, Char. Nath. Char. I, I Hi. Hi. Uh, Natalie is still on, on Masterclass. Uh, I think it's 80, 80 days 80. from now. And yeah. me, I, and me, I went um, 
40 days, but I uh, was very, very skinny. Uh, I lost uh, 20 pounds in 40 days. Uh, so, I, so I stopped about uh, one, uh, three weeks ago. Or, um, and then I tried to gain weight again, try to get muscles and try to eat a lot. and not able to gain weight. Uh, I'm still only five pounds more than I, I was uh, uh, when I stopped. So it's very strange. Uh, so I, I know I'm probably very, um, I don't, uh, uh, I don't assume what I, what I take. You know, so everything goes in my uh, bowels and get out so without uh, assigning. So I, how, many, how much time do you, do you think that I should wait or I do, can I should do another master fast? Uh, hmm. Are you asking me or are you asking Linda? Uh, both. <laughs> um, number, number one, uh, you, your body will not put on weight when you want it to put on a weight. It, it, uh, it will put on weight when it's ready to put on weight. That's number one. <laughs> so for your next master fast, yeah. you've only done. Uh, that's what I think. But I'll... sorry, you cut out. Hello. And we lost you. Hello? It's muted again, Gino. I think he, he actually. So, sorry, uh, it's, I don't have a problem with talking. Sorry, uh, I, uh, did you hear the part I said? Your body will put on the weight when it's ready, not when you want to put weight on. So, uh, according to uh, you're saying, when, when should you start your next one? It's when you're mentally ready. It's all up here. Yeah, um, you can start so, time. Yeah, people believe they, oh, I got to put on some weight to fast. That's not what fasting's about. Yeah. You mm -hmm. fast when you're mentally ready, not you, because you got to put weight on first. It doesn't work that way. You're, gonna, you can, you're only going to lose so much on a fast. If you go to skin and bones, that's the most you're going to lose. You're not going to go less than that. Mm -hmm. Not everybody goes to skin and bones. Some people do, and that's the word they have to go. But like myself, I've been doing so long. I don't go to skin and bones, even at 108 days. Mm -hmm. You know, I go down to about 137, 38 was the lowest I've been. You know, and I'm regularly about 155, 160-ish when I'm eating. So um, it, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a, a, a thing that as you continue to fast over time, over years and so on and so forth, the body's completely restructuring itself. As long as you're eating clean, there's going to come a point where when you fast, you don't lose a lot of weight no more because the body's built on better materials. So it takes time. So after you've done 40 days, you know, you wait another few weeks, a month or two, go on another one. You know, like Linda was talking at the beginning uh, before we came on, I already decided to do 30 days master fast, 30 days eat. 30 days master fast, 30 days eat. That's how she's living now. And that's a beautiful system. Find something that you can work with that's simple. The, the reason we choose 108 days for the first one is so you really focus on cleaning the GI tract really, really as well as we can. Because it's not going to completely clean 108 days. It's a good start to open doors. I mean, um, so many people start uh, with already a lower weight because they have mal malabsorption. And we have people also who have done that, uh, who have started with very low weight because of malabsorption issues or whatever it is right but they were already very thin finished 108 days and even thinner but you know what they're gaining weight in a very healthy way and they're very happy uh, there's uh evo is a very good example evo his name you can uh, look him up ivo um on the facebook page yeah uh, he, he, I mean, he's posting now, he's eating his fruits and enjoying his food and he's gaining weight, but like in a healthy way and um, enjoying it, every moment. It's, um, we, people really are, are so fearful of losing weight. And we have people coming to the page that are new and have no idea. Oh, what is this? A page of anorexia and blah, blah, blah. This is total ignorance. Mm -hmm. Total ignorance. They have no clue of the ability the body has to heal itself. And the only thing in their way is complete ignorance and fear because they don't have any understanding of what we're doing. That's all it is. When you have an understanding, 
The physicality means nothing, nothing. Because if you ask everybody that is a, it has went to skin and bones, they feel amazing, every single person. Yeah. So what does the body have to do? When we leave, we're not taking this with us anyway. I but yeah. you're going to gain it back. This is what people I don't know. I went to down 40 kilos at the end of 108 days. And um, I have to say, I always felt amazing, especially towards the end. I felt amazing. Even, even though I was so skinny. I mean, I had so many criticism, you know, from uh, outside people, my family, even my clients at work, you know. I feel amazing, you know. I, yes, I look skinny, but I feel amazing. Nothing will replace that. I'm sorry. I don't, you know, I, I still feel I look better than when I'm overweight, you know. <laughs> I, I don't care, you know. Yes, I, I know I'm on the smaller side, but still, I feel... <laughs> Being smaller is better for me than being bigger than my ideal weight. Yeah, the challenge out there is ignorance. And we've had so many people on the board had horrible experience within their own families, calling the police and crazy psychiatrists. It's just insanity. The fear in people. But they'll gladly run to a doctor, get their chest split open. Without question. Hey. Go for it. That's not where I'm at. I'm going to trust in my creator that made my perfect design to heal itself. That's exactly. Awesome. I agree. We have to trust. We have to trust our body knows what it's doing. Yeah. It's when our mind takes control because of outside influences that we let control what we end up doing. We need to know that our body is going to do what it needs to do. And if you're feeling good, that's what the QI would go with. If you're feeling good, now if you feel sick, then maybe you need to drink some green juices or you know eat some more, you know drink eat some more fruits. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. Maybe do a, a couple of mono meals or three mono meals. And you know, keep your dry fast window shorter so you're getting more nutrition so you can rebuild. You know what you've you know torn down because your body is going to get rid of the waste you know, that it needs to while you're fasting, but that doesn't stop once you break that fast. That actual healing continues on after you stop the fast. Oh, yeah. At least as long as the fast. At, At least as long as the fast. That's why Gino recommends, you know, trying to ease into, you know, solid foods so slowly so you actually extend that healing process out farther. But you've got to go with what you're feeling. You know, if you're not feeling good, you know, then definitely do something about it. But if you're feeling good, don't let outside forces in your mind take control of that. Okay? Yeah. This, this is where the support page comes in hand. Mm -hmm. So many people it saved just coming on the board and sharing what's going on. <laughs> That's what it's to, for. To understand what's normal and what's not, you know. To right. You know, you know, uh, you know Facebook. Uh, you, uh, did you see they, they had blocked me? Oh, that was Somebody, horrendous. Somebody put a complaint. Yeah, they're trying to shut it, whatever down, whoever. Uh, troll. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of the fastest groups, growing groups on Facebook, Gino. <laughs> for for, for all, uh, something in, to do with health. Yeah, I've never seen anything grow like this. Never. And I've been on, on a lot of groups before. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't seen any other groups that I've been on uh, anywhere near. Actually, to get testimony was like pulling teeth anywhere else to me. I, 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 didn't find it. I was trying to get something from my dad several years ago, give him some encouragement. I couldn't get any testimonials. Mm. Nowhere. Yeah. I'm going, what's going on here? <laughs> like, so anyway, that's neither here nor there, but uh, yeah, lose the fear. Gain the knowledge, lose the fear. Gain the knowledge, lose the fear. Gain that knowledge, you lose the fear. But, three but, times, so it's <laughs> right, but always, always trust, always trust your soul because your soul and your intuition is going to, you know, show you the way. Yeah. And once you're, once you're open to the, you know, the reality of how our body heals, then it's pretty, it's pretty simple. You know, what we need to do, and we need to get out of its way 
totally out of its way. Exactly. Yeah. Anytime we put the mind, we get cause issues. <laughs> but it takes time. It takes practice for us to get to that stage where we can listen to our body. Oh, this is why we got support, right? People have gone through it. And then yeah. people who have gone through it are still confused because they don't have the total understanding. They haven't gone through the cycle yet. Mm -hmm. Once you've gone through, you know, two, three, four of these, then you start seeing, oh, okay, now I get it. And you're yeah. you're seeing that. Too many people are quick to judge. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're ignorant. Well, and I think also there's a lot of people that are very, very um, impatient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want to see results tomorrow. Yesterday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> In worst case scenario yesterday, but yeah. you know, you have to let your body do what it needs to do. Mm. So that is really of utmost important. Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm glad you brought that up right from the start. As soon as I started sharing, what was the plan? Seven to nine years. Yep. I don't see anybody in the alternative health thing talking about that much time. Nobody. Mm -hmm. A year, two years, months, and I just cringe when people start saying that because it's the furthest thing from the truth. Right. You might be um, in uh, in uh, uh, no, you might be free of something according to a test. But yeah. you don't feel. Oh, no, and and with what I've been through, watching this mass go bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, and then all of a sudden with the fruit, bam, you know, <laughs> disappeared basically. It's not that my body hasn't given me other clues that it's de regenerating itself um, with my hair turning back to brown and my eyes getting better. I mean, I've worn glasses since I was seven, you know, and <laughs> going to the eye doctor in June of 2016, before I left for Cal, you know, to go back home to Oregon, I told my daughter, I go, I need to go to the eye doctor. I, you know, it's really blurry. And I think I've got cataracts, you know, I'm in my sixties, you know, that's when cataracts start showing up. Mm -hmm. And when I went to the eye doctor and he did the exam, you know, well, the assistant did the exam because it's all done by machine. Well, when he came in and he went ahead and did it all over again, he goes, I've never seen somebody your age. It's, their eyes are better. He goes, your prescription's too strong. Wow. Why you can't see out of your glasses. So I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, he goes, I bet, you know, and he asked me, he goes, what are you doing? He goes, are you doing anything? And I said, well, I'm doing a grape and lemon juice fast. <laughs> So anyways, and I shared with him for a while, but anyways, he said probably within a year and a half, I, you know, which will be, and I need to get my eyes checked again because it's blurry again, but <laughs> by next summer, he goes, I would, you know, by the winter, next winter, the 17, you know, he probably, he said, you probably not wear glasses. Yeah. Force yourself not to wear them. Do I exercise every day? I do. I do. When I do my, my enemas and when I'm just doing my normal things, yep, I do my exercise exercises. The Bates uh, method. Do you I, do the Bates uh, method? Yeah, there's, I, there's many different ones, but yeah. Yeah, that's the basic one most people know. But there's a yoga exercise. I just do the exercises. Mm -hmm. And um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I, I uh, totally uh, lost my nearsightedness uh, when I was doing the high fat sun gazing. One day just, boom, gone. gone. Yeah. I had a perfect eyesight, mm -hmm. and now I can read again, not very, very fine print, but before I couldn't read anything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm getting that back as well, and I've never worn glasses in my life, but uh, I'm just uh, throwing that out there because, um, uh, you know, there's, everything's possible. Uh, my, my memory was gone, that, that came back, but anyway, any other quick question here? We're... Uh, so may um a mono meal is just eating one kind of fruit at a time so for lunch i'll have you know or my meal for the day i'll have a whole watermelon the next day i'll have oranges the next day i'll have you know maybe four pounds of grapes um Are you eating one meal a day or two or just one no. i don't need to eat two i'm not hungry Wow. It's weird. Awesome. I know. Awesome. It is. It's just, it's so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it is. 
What's the anything else listening to? Um, yeah, that's it. I think. Uh, right. No, no cooked foods, May. No, no cooked. I don't. I won't. I won't eat cooked foods again. But no, you. I mean, I wouldn't cooked my. I wouldn't cook my fruits. To tell you the truth, mono meal is. You know what we prefer to. You know, uh, recommend is a mono fruit meal. You know, so I do know that they have an elimination diet, which is mono vegetable or foods. Mm -hmm. So you eat just one particular kind of food like broccoli or cauliflower. And that basically will give your body, if you're in tune with your body, it'll give your body clues that you're sensitive to that food and you should probably stay away from that. Does that make sense? Hopefully. <laughs> Okay, good. We have another other question. Uh, I'm sure you uh, you lost uh, your, uh, many uh, the weight all the weight that you have lost uh, because my my uh, wife Natalie uh, has also uh, lost a lot of weight about uh, previous uh, 80 days, and she's uh, concerned with her skin, uh, toning skin, toning and and the excess of skin and. Uh, we have some issues about that and how do you deal with that? Uh, because uh, sometimes for men also. So the sagging, the sagging skin? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, I that's connective tissue related. So that's the parathyroid gland. Right, Gino? Am I right with that? Yeah. yeah. Thyroid, yeah. Parathyroid, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yes, we know, but uh, and she takes uh, tinctures and uh, many things to help uh, destroy the bone strength, uh, tinctures and things like that. But uh, is there something or is there, is there a mix of things that you put on your skin or? You yeah, have, uh, there was a who was a somebody was trying to put on the skin to shrink it. Hmm. Um, no, there was some herbs. Or somebody mentioned. I can't remember. To help tighten the skin, but it's 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 a matter of time. It's, it's a lot of loose skin. One to two years, it all goes back to normal. Maybe some people maybe a bit longer. Um, rebounding, get some tone. You know, work on your thyroid a lot. Castor oil packs. Dry work on the, the kidney. The dry skin brushing. We we have everything. All the tools that we're sharing. You got to you got to be consistent and persistent. Mm -hmm. Not worry about it. Yeah. The body will fix it. It's Give very, it time. It's very interesting when you lose weight on the master fast. It's really not very saggy skin like when you lose on, let's say, um, high protein diet with low carb, whatever, right? Um, I feel it's, it's, the body is like, it's getting back in shape, even though it's, yes, it's losing our fur and there's a little bit of saggy skin. Still, it's, it's much nicer way of losing weight than any other diet I've ever seen, you know? I've lost weight before and it's not the same. It's, it, I feel my body is just shaping, you know? It's a nice way of losing weight. Um, yeah, there are some more questions. And, uh, and Natalie is the first because um, uh, 20 years ago, she got uh, 100 pounds uh, gain uh, in one year. Mm -hmm. Because her, uh, she was going to, um, to a nurse internship, she, get, she, had, she had to, uh, she was forced to get uh, several uh, vaccines. And uh, in the time, and after that, she gained 100 pounds in uh, one year, and she has to, to to quit the internship and quit and quit everything, and she was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you're cutting out there, uh, Charles. We lost you. Hello. No, we lost them. That's pretty sad, though. Uh, okay, we have a question. Who's this? Uh, Eleanor again? Yes. Go Can ahead. you hear me? Yep. I just want to tell that it's, it's uh, the, the go, go to cola tinctures about the saggy skin. Oh, that's it. Go to cola, yeah. Yes, that's the one. That just I, I wanted to say that. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, Thank okay. You. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, and uh, thank you. And uh, she, uh, so this is the first time that she gets she gets to lose weight since uh, since uh, 10, uh, uh, 20 years. So we, uh, after gaining one hundred pounds in one year. 
Mm. So it's very uh, good That's result, good. and it not so fast. It's the yeah. first time. But then with, with Dr. Moros, so, so little results. So we're very, uh, she's very happy, and uh, we're very happy of the results that we get, uh, that she gets, and uh, yeah, uh, and uh, our, our kidneys are filtering for the first time, because if we, we uh, after the, the dry flush, every time we check the uh, the urine uh, and, uh, and in the uh, in the jar, and uh, and we uh, and she sees some sediments or some uh, yes. so, so we're very very thankful on that. So yeah. and. Uh, but the one thing that we are concerned is about um, parasites and plaquing, because we don't get that much uh, parasites and plaquing. Uh, Hello? Uh, okay, I, I don't know uh, why. Are you, uh, do you hear us? The camera is Because I think we are, uh, because we are, we are, um, so, so do it for parasites, when do, because after 90, 80 days, she doesn't have that much parasite that went off. And also the plaquing is so little. So do you have uh, cases like this or, uh, or depends on the so person? Or? Every, everybody's unique, Charles, but she, she's did 80 days so far? Yeah. Yes. Eight zero, okay. Yeah, number one is uh, not all parasites are visible with the naked eye. Yeah. Well, forget about concerning yourself about parasites. We never focus on killing parasites. We focus on changing the terrain, and then the parasites have no more purpose and they leave. Some could be visible, most are not visible. They're microscopic or whatever. Doesn't matter, don't worry about it. And uh, you're basically saying you haven't seen any plaque? When you go- uh, not, that, uh, not that much, maybe a bit with uh, the pudding and things like that. But so it that smells like much. roses when she goes to the bathroom? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the, the smell. Oh, is it uh, me? Me, I see, I, 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 uh, I smell things, bad things and things like that when I get, but her not, not that much. Okay. But, but she did, uh, she did uh, a big, uh, um, uh, colonic. Uh, with a specialist, with a, and uh, she uh, and uh, the person saw many old uh, uh, bile, uh, bile, bile, very dark and yeah. old bile. So then yeah. she was she was surprised to see that. So the the clinic uh, specialist said, "Oh, I got some that much," and was surprised. Yeah. So I think she didn't move. That's good. Um, some people um, are so locked up; it may take longer to start moving things. Um, we had one guy who was a Josh, uh, after 60 days, then he started to release at 60 days. So everybody's different. Uh, 108 days is a good start to open the doors. Remember that, mm -hmm. that's all it is. Where we're gonna go from there, once you do 108 days or whatever, plan your next one. Plan your next one. It could be in six months later. It could be eight months. It could even be a year later before you do another one. But plan your next one and maintain the dry fasting. You know, the season changed. Go for as long as you can go. When, you do, when you're eating. When you're eating and you do your dry, go as long as you can. Especially on the season change. Okay. And, and uh, recently, uh, since I think a week, she has very trouble to eat. She, 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 and then uh, to, drink, to drink and to take her, uh, her plasma pudding and things like that. So it's very difficult for her. No, she's nauseous and like, and then taking the herbs, very nauseous and she's not able to do it and uh, too much and, uh, every time. And then thinking about the herbs is always, uh, <laughs> she has uh, some... Uh, it's because they're doing, yeah, it's, it's because they're doing their work. They're, they're starting to move things and the disturbing, and that's really, really in the deep level. And anytime somebody goes through a phase where they can't handle drinking the juice or the herbs, this is where you need to focus and keep going, because this is when really deep work is happening. And these things, or whatever's inside, is trying to stop you. <laughs> so you have to be consistent and persistent, use the tools, lots of enemas, uh, ice and heat and ice in the back of the head if you're nausea and stuff. 
uh, castor oil packs, three days on, three days off, you got on the kidneys. You gotta keep things moving. Acupressure points, massage all the acupressure points with the burnt stick. Keep energy moving, breathe, move, go for walks, yoga, rebounding, whatever. Keep things, keep busy, keep busy. This is the time where you have to keep going. And each week, uh, she, uh, we, uh, I, get, uh, I doing to her uh, ear candling, ear candles, three candles per ear, and and very big uh, candles, and there's so much mucus coming out of her ear every time you have a candle. For uh, we're doing that for three six, months, uh, three it's, months. I think not six months. Six we're months. doing that three uh, three candles per ear per week. That hey. much every time. We, we, it's, 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 it's hard to understand how much the human body can hold. It's, it's, it's hard to understand. You know, we see all these people eliminate, eliminate. It's, it's just, it's unbelievable. You know, even myself, you know, I did a dry clad deer candles, so much stuff. I've always had a problem in my head, you know, blocking up. But, you know, we just keep going. We keep going. And if you maintain clean eating, it doesn't build back up. It's only when you go back to the crap. <laughs> it's gonna come back. So just you have to stay focused. Like Linda, she's doing basically a picture perfect master fast and in between master fast. You can't ask for anything more than that. That's that's picture perfect. You know, she could be a model for master fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean? You are a model for master <laughs> fast. You're on the team. <laughs> this is this is what you want. Thank you. You know, but uh, yeah, guys. Um, Thank you. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. This, these are the times where people want to quit, mm -hmm. and these are the times where, when you have the knowledge, the faith, and the trust, is you keep going. Pedal to the metal. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Because you'll pass through that stage, and you'll come up so much better. Once you remove. That stuff that's locking you up. Because that's all it is. And, you know, sometimes people start eliminating more at 80, 90, 100 days. It's just crazy. Like the old, deeper stuff. So, you know, what you've just said, you know, your ears are still, you know, that's just showing you what I just went, what I just mentioned. You're, you're getting into that deep stuff. How do I know it? I've been through this. <laughs> so, I, 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 I know. I know what's going on. I, it's just annoying. Experience trumps paper by far. So, um, yeah, just keep it up, guys. Use the tools. Use the tools. Use the support. Where are you guys located? If, uh, if, is it French speaking? Yes, Quebec City. Quebec City. Oh, you're from Canada. Okay. Okay, yeah, now I remember, uh, yeah, you guys ordered some stuff, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and we are very, very thankful. Yeah. Evan, it's, it's hard for her, and, and she's very courageous, and she's, um, she's making, um, doing some cooking for me, many, many recipes and things like that for me, for uh, like uh, vegetables and things like that, and she's not eating, and... Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so she's able to, to do that, but she, yeah, she, and she, she's a, she's a, um, so uh, yeah, so yeah. Very happy for the first time she gets results in 20 some years uh, of uh, training anything. How so many years you've been trying? Uh, yes, yeah. uh, so much and so little yeah. results. So, so with, many, so many times. Make without meat, uh, just fruit, a uh, little legume. Uh, workout, and, uh, uh, many uh, hours of workout per day, and it, instead of well, she was getting, she was uh, uh, getting bad, and she was gaining weight, get, uh, gaining weight. So it was very strange. It was, people were not, with, hey, what, we were, she were, you were not understanding what was going on with her. I, I don't understand. You, you were, you eat well. You, 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 you exercise. work out a lot. You exercise a lot, and you gain weight, and. You, and she was as difficulty to sleep because of the adrenaline and everything, and uh, and after uh, in the far four three years four years ago, um, she began to have very very abundant uh, periods with uh, cl blood clots, and uh, that were during five to, to seven days 
a month and she, in, and sometimes it was so abundant that she, she had difficulty uh, she had uh, to, uh, to get out of the, uh, of the shower when she had too much blood get, getting out. Wow. So, uh, and then after getting back to uh, to a uh, to a uh, to raw to show uh, to raw and raw vegetable, it, it got better, and uh, she was able to get out of the coffee enema, you know, coffee enema that she she did for a few years because it uh, almost every day because she had too much headache and and migraines, and after doing some more uh, fruit and vegetables she was better, but she was she had a plateau even with Dr. Yeah, Morris. Uh, so, so, and she still had some of her 80, uh, weight, 80 pounds to, 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 to lose, and, and then she, and then since the mass of us, she, she lost maybe uh, half of it. Excellent. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not going to find plateau on Master Fast. <laughs> there isn't any. No, there, there's nobody who's plateaued yet. So, how far do you want to go? It's up to you. It's the, it's the mind, the, the emotion, it's, it's, that's, that's the only thing that you have to focus on, to be stable with here. Never mind what's going on in the body, everything you've told me, push the, the gas pedal and keep going. Keep the trust, because now you're stirring up the really deep stuff. This is the key that people fail to see. You know, oh, my body doesn't want this no more. No, 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 not when you're on a fast. <laughs> Now is the time we're doing a lot of deep work. Mm -hmm. Trust me on that. If you want to trust one thing, uh, <laughs> I, I, I understand what's going on. You're on the best herbs. There's, you're not going to find any quality of peaches anywhere. I've, I've searched everywhere. It's all water on the market. It's all water, and you're paying more money. These are the best you're going to find by far. By far. And, best and, price the, more, and the most reasonable. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the prices, I, I, we can't make them any lower, really, folks. It's just, it's not going to be feasible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And one concern about uh, when uh, she's doing graphics and also me, uh, the last um, day, the last night of the dry fast, very difficult to sleep. Uh, the, the, yeah, that happens. And, and uh, the. The blood, the blood rate, I don't know, the heart rate is getting, uh, and, and the heart palpitation and things like that is getting off. Uh, palpitations? Uh, yeah. yeah. Palpitations, huh? Yeah, yeah. it happens. Yeah. That, that happens. Uh, uh, Nat, have you taken a, med a lot of medication in your life? Nothing. Never in your life before? Well, uh, maybe some, uh, 20 some years ago, she had some medication for pain, but. Uh, she took it only a few, uh, only a uh, few months. Uh, she also took uh, some pills for her for uh, uh, prayer, not to go crazy for a few uh, months, uh, six, uh, six months, but not that much. Uh, okay. Uh, the reason I'm asking, any any type of medication you've taken in your life doesn't matter how long ago, any chemicals you've been uh, ingesting through foods or whatever, air environment. Those things there are what usually gives you the heart palpitations when they're trying to come out. Okay, I mean, it, it, it needs a limit of because because of the, the several vaccines that she had, she had to, to took, and also yeah. uh, she got her uh, amalgams, her, her dental amalgams removed. Uh, she had uh, twelve of them with, mer with, with mercury. They were used, and when the the, the Holistic dentist did uh, the surgery to get them out and replace them by uh, uh, ceramic ones. Uh, he found um, what we call uh, a mercury tattoo, a ball of liquid mercury in her gum that she that you removed. So if she had this, that liquid uh, ball of mercury inside her gum, imagine all. How many she has in all of her Okay, so now the story starts coming oh. out and why she's becoming uh, late in, in getting into the deep stuff. Yeah. It's okay. Just keep going. Keep going. Yeah. All this stuff, even if you go more than 108 days, keep going. Keep going. Don't worry. The, the body's pulling it all out. Don't worry about it. The body knows what to do. The body knows what to do. And when you shoot that she got with her skin, uh, her uh, right uh, upper arm um, 
after a, a few months with the Dr. Morse and things like that, she got some very itchy uh, skin uh, on her uh, upper arm, her upper right arm. And during when she went to bed, it got worse and that's less to stop it, to, to itch and to, uh, and she was, even with the dry, dry brush and things like that, and it was still, still getting uh, some, um, some issues with that. But after the a few uh, weeks on the master fast, it diminished, it reduced the results, and now she has uh, almost any, nothing. Don't be, surpri don't be surprised if it comes again. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. It, it might show its ugly face again because your body's trying to eliminate that, and it'll use any source of elimination to get it out. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Keep the faith. Yeah. Keep the faith and know your body knows what to do. That's all. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Okay, so uh, yeah, I don't mind when we have to go a little bit over when we have some, you know, great questions and stuff to help people. It's no big deal for me. Uh, this is what we're here for. But, um, you know, we're what, at almost two and a half hours now. Um, it's been awesome uh, for Linda to share her time with us and uh, her experience. It's, uh, you know, going to help so many people uh, have a better understanding uh, because you were in the inside. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And uh, yeah. we thank you so much. We were blessing for you to be part of our team to, you know. No, I feel honored, Gino. I really do. I really feel honored. So, um, you know, it's uh, the goal is to have somebody around the clock to be able to help anybody, anytime, anywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's been happening. And, and uh, you know, the page is not for um, questions for people who do not want to read. I keep right. going back to that. And it's, and it's becoming better and better. We want people to educate themselves because just like we can't do the fast for you, we can't read for you. So you have to have that basic understanding, then ask intelligent questions. We're there for you. We, we yeah, we can't we can't keep answering the same questions over and over and over. We do our best to help and organize. Everything. You know, use the search button, use Google. It's you know what I mean. Learn to do this. It's all there. You know, otherwise you're just taking people's time, and it's it's not fair for everybody else that we need to be there for who who are in a, in a serious situation because we have a lot of serious situations in the group. <laughs> And that's what we're really there for. So, you know, uh, I, I love intelligent questions. Uh, I, I want to be sharp, uh, you know, saying the same thing over and over, you know. It's all, it's all spelled out for you. Um, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a very good place for people to go for support. Uh, I haven't seen anything like it ever, ever online. We have the best support system, fantastic support system. Uh, with knowledgeable people, very knowledgeable people on our team. <clears throat> and there's others uh, that have been through this system that are very knowledgeable as well. Um, but uh, for now, uh, you know, uh, we're, 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 we're well with, what do we have now? How many admins do we have now? Uh, we have 16. 16? 16 we got up to? Wow. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Gino? Have... Gino? Yeah. Connie questioned about, talk about water, please. <laughs> just to get it on again, just for a, a recap. <laughs> People just can't get over. You don't drink water. <laughs> when was the last time you drank water, Linda? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no. I'm, I use water in my enemas. I use water in my teas. Bam, there it is. Shower, Champions. swim. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Okay, yep. so um, it's, a, it's a hard thing for us to get around because it's, it's been marketed to us to hell. It's become an industry worldwide. And, you know, the analogy I, I, I put to people very simply, I went through the whole water thing, guys. I did a lot of research on water, and I went through drinking one, one and a half gallons of water a day for a long period of time with the clear urine crap. So if you look at, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be what, uh, 53 this summer, 53 years. 
And when I grew up, nobody had bottled water. It wasn't talked about, you have to drink so many. It wasn't. Um, allergies in, our, in, my class, in my class, I, I don't remember anybody with allergies. I'm just going to give you this basic two analogies. As the years went on by, this water started to be marketing. Now, you can go outside anytime, anywhere, you'll see somebody with a bottle of water, especially in the summer. In cars, I see people drinking their water, and I'm going, Jesus. <laughs> and, you know, when I look back at growing up to now, just on that analogy, people were healthier back then than they are now. And every decade, it gets worse and worse and worse, and people are drinking more and more water. So, what is it about water? People say, we've been taught we're made up about 70 to 90 percent water, whatever the range is from when we're born to when we get old. And it's the furthest thing from the truth. <clears throat> uh, our body is in a GANS plasmatic semi-matter state. Anything that goes into our body, whether it's solid, liquid, air, gets converted into a plasmatic state. So our body is not water. You know, we're made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and many other elements in, in a semi-matter GAN state. They say, you know, carbon is only in, uh, it can't be put in a, in a, in a, in a semi-matter state. Well, pinch yourself, you know, we're made of it. So this is how blind our mainstream science is, or it's done deliberately to keep us in the dark, one or the other. Cohen, C O H N, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen is the basis of amino acids and for physicality on this life, whether it's a human, an animal, plant, insect. You cannot have life form on planet Earth in matter state without that. Cohen, we call it in plasma science, C-O-H-N. That is the basic structure. And you know, when people are talking about too much sugar, you just gotta laugh, carbon, carbon. <laughs> Cheers, I'll have my, my, extra, my dose of sugar. <laughs> so with that basic structure, and we can't live without it, um, how does water fit in? Well, water is a big part of this planet. And it's used for many different things as a con and, and we use it to convert from that state to a uh, semi-plasmatic uh, matter state. So when we're eating a fruit, which is in a, in a again, state, semi-matter state, there is a form of hydration that you're not going to get from H2O. H2O, hydrogen has two molecules of hydrogen and one of oxygen. And hydration is not about water, as I keep saying, it's about the hydrogen molecule, specifically, from my understanding. That could be wrong. <laughs> so I don't have any papers, I don't have any degrees, I don't have anything. I'm just a guy who grew up on the street who, can, who failed English and many other things. So. This, this, this hydrogen, which the plants take in from nitrogen in the air, from the sun, and from the roots in the ground through salts, they convert things so when we take them in, we can assimilate them because very easily because they're already in a, in a proper state for us to use them. And the hydrogen becomes very available to us, to hydrate us. When we're taking in just straight H2O, it's a very aggressive solvent, we can call, kind of call it, which strips us of hydrogen, same to same, two molecules of hydrogen, stripping, likes, attracts alike, stripping our hydration. It's actually dehydrating you at the cellular level. That's why so many people get in trouble drinking all this water. 
Mm -hmm. So many people solve their issues with getting them off the water. Just one simple thing that we're, we're showing. We're not proving anything by science labs and papers. We're showing people by results, by people doing. You're going to get your hydration from the best is fruit. By far, number, number one thing, if you're going to eat anything. You can actually do it through the nitrogen in the air, which is even superior. Uh, few of us will probably get there. Most of us won't, and that's okay, but we're partially doing it anyway. Um, you ever hear of when people start getting heart issues and this and that, their breathing changes, and they start forming uh, water in their lungs. Mm -hmm. That water is not collected from the body. That water is being made from their breath. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're pulling out one, one, two, three liters, whatever crazy amounts of fluids from the lungs, from people with heart conditions, because of their breathing. So the whole body's out of balance, and, and, the, and it just starts backing up. The body's making way too much uh, water from the breathing. Because you'll notice anybody who's sick, their breathing changes uh, all the time. All the time. What, the, the, it's a rapid breath, whatever. It's, it's a different breath. <clears throat> Anybody who goes breatharian, if you would take a picture of them before they were breatharian and after, their posture will be different because their breathing changes. This is how they're living on air. So we need to look at what are we doing, you know, 70, 80% of the day at least. We're not eating. We're not eating. So we're getting our energy from somewhere. And it's not only energy, we're getting our hydration, we're getting our amino acids, we're getting everything through the plasmatic nitrogen in the air, which is not what we're taught, but it's, it's possible. If you watch my video or any of the Keshe videos on how to collect CO2, that little kit, CO2 box, with the nano-coated copper and the zinc plate, you'll see when we put salt water in there with a wire connected, it's collecting CO2 and zinc oxide, and on the surface, you're gonna, you're gonna collect uh, your uh, amino acids. You'll see the fatty substance, oily substance on the surface of the water. <clears throat> so, you know, it's like uh, our fossil fuels, which aren't fossil at all. The earth is making them continuously. It'll never run out. The more they pull, the more it'll make. It's another facade that we've been dealt with, you know? And this whole carbon thing about, uh, you know, they want to start taxing us in carbon. Everything they teach you, look at the opposite and, and you'll be correct. Mm -hmm. It's because the carbon is so important in the structure of our existence and physicality. It's part of the co Cohen. Carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Without those, we won't be here, folks. Those are the keys for life form. And your amino acids and all your fats and everything, your body makes them. Your body makes them. And if you don't believe it, you don't believe it. But we're doing it anyway. The reason your body, uh, people um, um, start going on these uh, uh, cl cleaner diets and so on and so forth and they fall into trouble is because they haven't done a good cleaning job. Mm -hmm. Everything's closed. Yep. They've been eating fruit for 10, 15 years and it's, it, it can't solve their issues because they haven't opened the doors like we're doing. Mm -hmm. Once you start opening the doors, you're going to see the magic. The parathyroid is responsible for not only uh, um, your tissues and, and, uh, and uh, all that. It also is your function of creating any element it needs in the body. So if you have an abundance of, let's say, calcium in your body needs iodine, the parathyroid will plasmatically convert the calcium energetically to iodine so the body can use it. It's not transmutation. That's another thing that is not really correct. It's done plasmatic level, meaning it changes the field strength so it acts, acts like uh, iodine in your body so your body can utilize it. So these are the things that it's all uh, a new understanding that's being taught in the cash plasma space technology. And I don't have a complete understanding of it. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm studying it every day, but 
it's, you know, we're all going to get different understandings of it. And um, it's okay if we don't, because um, everything that we, we've been taught is based on looking at matter state only. And matter state, for example, chemistry is looking at a very small window of what's happening only in matter state. And they're not looking at what's actually really going on. They're only looking at the effects of what's going on. You know, like we're acid or alkaline. You know, they're looking at that. Meanwhile, it has nothing to do with the body, how it functions. <laughs> nothing. You know, we're going into a, an extreme, strong acid side to create the most healing ever. Thrive fasting is called. How do you explain that in chemistry? You can't. You can't. Can I add one more thing about the water and hydration? When we're eating heavy food and the cooked food, we get thirsty. When we're eating raw food, especially fruits, we become hydrated. When we dry fast, we become less thirsty. We want less liquid even when we start drinking the juice again. Mm -hmm. So there is something about it. When you dry fast, it makes it hydrates you. Dry fasting even, hydrates you. Even drinking, you know, even drinking makes you makes you feel heavy. It, it's it's not enough hydration, you know. Like it's um, I think we we slowly want to reach that level where we feel completely hydrated, even on minimal juice, you know, minimal uh, even foods or whatever it is that we're doing. The, the trigger to hydration, folks, is dry fasting. The trigger, that's going to open you up to hydration. And um, there's, uh, what's his name, jo Jordan? He's, you know, he's going along, going along. And uh, he put a post about, uh, he, he was measuring his, uh, his water levels and stuff on the scale, those scales that you buy. And he goes, uh, th th whatever it is, it's working, man. He goes, my, my percentage went from this much to this much. I can't remember the numbers. He goes, and I've never seen anybody where he goes and measured nowhere near what I am. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's only his first master class. But um, so, you know, if you don't want to believe it, don't believe it. No, it's, it's experience you're, you're, as well. Yeah. When you experience it, I'm sure everybody who's done the master class will yeah. say exactly the same thing, especially who has done 108 days. I have uh, I used to drink a gallon of water a day at least, and I was always thirsty. Yeah, it yeah. was ludicrous, all the bathroom trips. Ludicrous. Insane. Yeah. And I'm, you know, yeah, okay, clear urine. This is, <laughs> this is where the health is. Yeah, okay. Just stress the hell out of your kidney, strip all the vitality out of your cells. That's what it does. That's the reality of it. Dry fasting triggers the start of your hydration. How long will it take for the body to hydrate? Um, it'll take years. Years. Properly convert from a dehydrated state to a hydrated state. One master fast, a long one, you'll start the conversion. You'll see after you come out, you're, you're not thirsty. You're not thirsty anymore, unless you go to cooked foods. And if you put salt, you're going to want to drink everything. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the key is continue your dry fasting, you know, windows. It's okay if you change them every day. You don't have to be 100% religious, whatever. Some days you might drink a little more. That's okay. But don't sway away from your dry fasting. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the trigger for hydration. Because when you go back and forth, back and forth, that's going to train your cells to hydrate. Yeah. So water is about stripping you of hydration, and dry fasting is about hydration while eating, you know, clean fruits, some salads in the raw state is your best. If you're going to have some cooked, it's fine. You want to feel grounded, whatever, lightly steamed, baked, whatever. Um, but, um, you know, the, cl the closer you are to staying, with, uh, staying to what uh, Linda's doing, just fruit and mono meals. That is ideal. Will everybody go that? No. Does everybody have to do that? No. Everybody's experience is different. But what Linda's showing and what she's doing is a per picture perfect ideal situation, how you want to live your life if you want the ultimate in health. And she's showing you the results that she's getting and continuing to get by what she's, uh, you know, 
uh, the way she's living her life, folks. Master Fast is a life system. It's not a diet. It's not a fast. It's a lifetime commitment. I'll never go off it. <laughs> it'll always be, uh, dry fasting will always be a part of my life. Yeah, it's, I feel amazing when I dry fast. I know. Well, you know, I haven't pushed it as far as you, but, you know, I'm not crazy like you either. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it's whatever. I, I, keep, I know. I love it. I love pushing myself. I just did 13 days. I did, I did this, uh, uh, the, the most of it with tinctures. It was, it was a big challenge. 13 days yeah. is a big challenge. But um, it's awesome. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Well. All right. Uh, we've... Uh, We've gone, so uh, I hope I clarified it a bit. I, I sometimes um, yeah. cannot convey things so people understand it properly, whatever. But I, I don't have a, I don't have the Luciferic intellect. Uh, we do our best. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do things by showing better. Yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah. that's me. So, you know. well, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Gino and Rana. I appreciate thank so it. Much. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's call it a night and uh, we'll see you all next week. Okay. Where else do we want to be? <laughs> yes. Good night, all. Good night. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Good night. Thank You're you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye